Sam, South Carolina State next on ESPNU. We're in the Palmetto State, South Carolina State University in Orangeburg in Oliver C. Dawson Stadium. Championship implications in this MEAC clash as Florida A&M comes to visit the home standing Bulldogs. The Rattlers have not won a meeting since 2001. They look to snap that stretch next. We welcome you to ESPN News College Football Primetime, presented by McDonald's. Today, we're at Oliver C. Dawson Stadium on the campus of South Carolina State as the Bulldogs get set to host the Florida A&M Rattlers. Very tight at the top of the BAC standings right now. A couple of one-loss teams, South Carolina State at 3-1, and one, Florida A&M at 2-2. Two and two. Alongside former NFL quarterback Jay Walker, Adam Amin on hand. Huge MEAC implications in this game because of the fact that no team has ever won a MEAC Conference Championship with three losses. Only once has it been done with two losses. Huge game for both these teams. Especially if you consider the fact that Florida A&M has already lost two conference games. Every game for the remainder of the season is must win for Joe Taylor and his Rattler ball squad. They've been there before. Last year, people forget, they were tied for co-champions with South Carolina State and Bethune-Cookman. As far as South Carolina State is concerned, Buddy Pugh, many people thought he had the best team in all of black college football. They slipped once but now they're right back on track. If they can win the remainder of their schedule, look for them to win the MEAC title. It's going to be very tight at the top the rest of the way. And these two coaches know each other pretty well. Joe Taylor, one of the legends in HBCU football. And meanwhile, Buddy Pugh has really had the better of this matchup against Florida A&M. And these two guys have actually coached against each other often. This is the 10th meeting between these two coaches. Buddy Pugh has had the better of the meetings. Six and three so far. Three consecutive MEAC championships for South Carolina State. There's a little room for another banner there as well. It's a rivalry that South Carolina State has had the better of as of late. Eight consecutive wins for the Bulldogs. As Blake Erickson of South Carolina State gets set to kick off, Florida AM won the toss and elected to receive. Devin Roberts and Edmund Baker back to return, and away we go. Baker pushed back near the goal line and brings it out and has a little bit of space. Good coverage from South Carolina State. Run out across the 20-yard line. South Carolina State has very good kick coverage. And Florida A&M starts off with the football. They've had some quarterback changes, and Damian Fleming, the true freshman from Jacksonville, took over halfway through the game against Southern on September the 24th coming in for Austin trainer the redshirt sophomore from Tallahassee Fleming has since taken over making his fourth career start had an opportunity to talk to quarterback coach Quinn Gray who's got NFL experience in his own right and he said Fleming has a high football IQ typically with a freshman quarterback you shrink the playbook they've expanded the playbook and here is Altariq McBurst who had a breakout game one week ago picks up three yards on that first down carry in Florida A&M's offense looks like this McBurst will get the start today two very good wide receivers on the outside and Tims and Elliott for Florida A&M Meanwhile, that offensive line did see a change today. Jerry and Moreland at the left tackle spot was second on the depth chart. He actually moves up to get the start today. And Steven Robinson is the MEAC offensive lineman of the week. Two tight end set for Florida A&M on second and seven. McBurse gets away from that initial pressure. And a good run for McBurse out near the first down marker. Eight yard pickup to move the chains. Good run from McBurse against this defense for South Carolina State, the nation's best last season. Pat Washington is an all MEAC selection. They're happy to have Ron L. Ferguson back as well after an injury kept him up the last couple of games. Very good linebacking core, especially in the middle. Richard and Thomas are two of the best in the MEAC. And the secondary sees Yari King return. He missed some time due to a concussion. Dominique Ellis has been very good. He has nine career interceptions from the safety spot. First and ten, a low snap recovered by Fleming. He can use his feet. He's calling for a blocker. And finally gets dragged down by Joe Thomas after a pickup of five yards. Good run from Fleming. This is going to be interesting to see how he fits into this scheme for Florida A&M. And it was a good play by the uh, quarterback. The ball was on the ground. He didn't get rattled. You see the wide receiver right in front of him. Well, you say throw him the football. But if he can't see who's behind him as a quarterback, you have to take that ball, tuck it, and pick up positive yardage. 
He's got very good touch as a passer, and everybody has been saying that Fleming has actually had a better grasp of the offense than Austin Trainer did when he began the season as the starting quarterback. Fleming takes a shot down the middle of the field, has a man, and it's incomplete. Lenworth Lennon, the redshirt freshman. He was the intended target. Christian Thompson had the coverage third down. That's the look that they wanted. When I talked to the offensive staff for Florida and m they said if we go with the bunch formation, we know the look that we're going to get from South Carolina State. And they actually got that look there, and they said we're going to put a lot of pressure on the free safety if we get that look. And you can tell right away the game plan was getting that bunch formation, attack the deep middle of the field. They almost came away with the big play. Levante Page comes into the backfield along with Fleming. On third and five. Throws the out route and has Lenworth Lennon. Picks up the first down after a 13 yard game. See here, nice pocket in front of him, and you see the fact that the quarterback Fleming's there. Throws a nice deliverable ball. Good job, good catch. And that's what they were missing in this offense. They did not have a quarterback when they had Trainer playing quarterback. Schematically, you had wide receivers that were open, but Trainer struggled with this percentage. He was only throwing the ball to 50% clip, missing wide open receivers. Fleming's come in here and delivered the ball. On first down, a carry. For McBurst, and he works his way past the 40 yard line, gain of 10, again close to the first down marker. And McBurst, who so far this season is averaging eight yards a carry, has been excellent on the ground so far for a Florida AM running game that is eighth in the conference, averaging just over 100 yards. So McBurst has given them a whole new element to this offense, along with a couple of other, other running backs. Yeah, and he's the guy that they've been waiting for. They were waiting for his arrival. Came in much ballyhooed transfer from Purdue University. And from day one, they thought he was going to be a special player. Now he's playing his best football. Yes, sir. Good drive for Florida AM to start. They'll reverse it. Brian Timms looking for some space and a good game on first down. He'll grab four yards, working out near the 35 yard line. Was brought down by Pat Washington. This is a good job of just getting the version here. They're going to try and fake McBurst this way. Timms is going to come around this way with the misdirection. You see how confusing it can look at times. The key is. Who's outside? Who stays home? Nobody stays home. If he would have gone outside, there was more yardage to be gained. I wouldn't be surprised if you saw the Rattlers come back to that play because there was an opening around the outer perimeter. There's good speed on that perimeter. Second and six. There's McBurris again. Stumbling forward after Dominique Ellis tripped him up, and he's one of our impact players today. McBurris, huge game last week. Yeah, and the fact of the matter, he's playing real good football. The transfer from Purdue averaging eight yards per carry coming into this contest. Miak offensive player of the week. They said when you talk to him, they said he had a little bit of trouble adjusting to the offense and was dealing with some things down there in the Florida area that most transfers have to do once they come back home. But now his best football is ahead of him. Career high 218 yards one week ago against Savannah State. Page is in the backfield on third and four as Fleming works out of the gun. Pocket collapsing and he's brought down. James Fullwood got to him. The redshirt junior from Sumter, South Carolina. A loss of seven on the play. That's something you've got to watch if you're Florida A&M. You see the pressure right there. They're bringing the blitz. You see Donovan Richard coming in there from the middle linebacker position to go along with Fleming. Schematically, they had enough bodies there to pick him up, but because of the interior stunt, by Fleming, they were able to get to the quarterback. And if you've got a, a true freshman quarterback starting in the road game in conference play, protection becomes that much more important. You have to protect the quarterback in these type of games in this type of environment. Stephen Murphy is back to return this Holdren delivery. So a good Florida A&M drive is going to get stopped up. And that is a gorgeous directional kick. This will be pinned inside the five yard line near the one. That is an absolute beauty from Brandon Holdren. 38 yard directional kick, keeping it inbounds. So the Rattlers stall, but a good punt from Holdren keeps the South Carolina State Bulldogs pinned deep. ESPN News College Football Primetime is brought to you by McDonald's. I'm loving it. Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference prides itself on a commitment.
back at South Carolina State University and the Florida A&M Rattlers Joe Taylor's club the veteran Joe Taylor with his team going eight plays and burning nearly five and a half minutes off the clock but a very good punt from Brandon Holdren pins South Carolina State deep inside of its own territory first down run and there is Richard Q keeping it himself the quarterback for South Carolina State a pickup of two yards he came in after Derek Wiley began the season as the starting quarterback Wiley went down with a knee injury a couple of weeks ago and Richard Q has stepped in and really grown into this role making his third career start so a couple of guys who don't have a ton of starting experience for both of these teams at the quarterback position Ashton Jordan on second down he takes it up the middle and Picks up three yards, and this is what the South Carolina State offense looks like. Jordan will get some carries, as will Jalen Simmons off the bench. Tyler McDonald has been excellent as one of the wide receivers, and a very solid front line for South Carolina State. They say this is a marquee game for their offensive line. They always get up against a Florida A&M ball club, and Florida A&M leads the MEAC in sacks, so it's going to be a big day for the offensive line. Third and four, Q working out of his own end zone, gets rid of the football. Pressure was coming very hard from Brandon Hepburn and fourth down South Carolina State will have to punt this one away. Yeah, they're going to bring the free safety blitz. You've got to recognize right there. That's the free safety. John Ojo once he comes in there he makes a swim move. That means they're throwing everything at you as a quarterback. You've got to recognize when that free safety is that close to the line of scrimmage identify him so the offensive line can they didn't big play by the Rattler defense. And now Blake Erickson who does all the kicking for this South Carolina State team handles all the duties back in his own end zone to punt it away to LaShawn Tooks. Tooks waiting just inside of his own territory averaging 24 yards a return and, and great coverage from South Carolina State. 44 yard punt and no return as Harris got to him and be sure to join us every Monday for the Palmer and Pollock show on ESPNU at 1 and 9 Eastern. Jesse and David provide an interactive look at the past week's action. They'll set the scene for the upcoming week's big games. College football lives here every day on ESPNU. A good field position for Florida A&M, which moved the football very well in its first drive. You know, the key for them, they said, is we, we have to be able to run the football. Although they like Fleming, his decision he makes in the throwing game, they said we cannot win with him throwing the football alone. We need the running game to step up. They picked up a couple first down. They look pretty sharp on offense so far. Play fake and a screen thrown out to Lenworth. And he gets run down by Donovan Richard. And then the rest of the Bulldogs come and join Richard, one of the great linebackers in the MEAC. A loss of four. Richard leads the MEAC in tackles. And he makes the initial contact. And with the spread offenses today in college football, you know, those wide receiver bubble screens, I mean, the formula shown on how do you beat those is have active linebackers. Yep. And Donovan Richards is one of those guys where he's an active linebacker. And you look at some of the better defenses in the MEAC conference, they've got great linebacker play. When you talk about the Keith Pews and the Ryan Lewis and those guys, so look for the linebacker play to eliminate those bubble screens. Second and long for Fleming. Good protection and time to throw. Lenworth led it across the middle. May have lost the football at the end of the play, but he is ruled down by contact. That's a dangerous move by keeping that ball out in front of your body. But a pickup of 10 yards and a third and manageable coming up. And we see it every week. The wide receivers trying to get that extra yard instead of just going down. Good job of clearing out. Gets a block on the outside. Now cover that football. He's very fortunate that he was whistled down as early as he was. Extended football out there. The defense is taught. Go for the strip, take it, make the official make a call. And Joe Thomas got to him. Third and five for Florida AM. Their third in conference in converting these third downs this season. Quick screen thrown out to the side. McBurse staying on his feet and he picks up the first down. Eight yard pickup for McBurse out of the backfield. They're going to try to get him the ball as often as possible. They've got three guys out of the backfield that can do a lot of different things. McBurse is the home run hitter, they say. They say he's similar to that Marshall Falk type of player. When Marshall Falk played in the NFL, he didn't leave the football field, whether it's a running down or a passing situation or as a route runner. And they think McBurse has that type of talent. Quite simply, with the ball, they say he can do it all. Picks up the first down there. He's had a couple of first downs. He's already run for over 20 yards. Florida AM, as they did on their first drive, moving the football. This is Eddie Rocker. 
has a block in front of him. He took Shelly Anthony, the redshirt senior, and pushed him and guided him for a pickup of eight yards as Dominique Ellis finally got to Eddie Rocker. He's been the main running back from the season start. So you see, you know, right here, when they get Eddie Rocker in the game, they're just going to try and swing that ball out there and follow that lead blocker there. Good job by the center, Shelly Anthony, number 58, of getting around there on that perimeter. Eddie Rocker, because of his size, 5'8", 175 pounds, they don't run him in between the tackles. They like to attack the perimeter. Screen thrown out to Levante Page out of the backfield. Dragged down out of bounds. Dominique Ellis got to him, but not before a pickup of a dozen yards. Page is their best receiver out of the backfield. He's their power guy. He showed off a little bit of that power there to pick up a good chunk of yardage. When we talked about McBurst, and then you saw Rocker, who they like to get on the edge. Well, Levante Page is a guy that once they get down in the red zone, they like to feed him the rock. Nine touchdowns on the season. This is his part of the field where he really excels. And that, uh, FAMU has really excelled in the red zone this season. Brought to you by Verizon. They have scored a touchdown on their last 11 red zone trips. Fleming. He's got Lennon. Trying to make a move and couldn't get past Courtney Ingram. That's a good throw right there by Fleming. That's something that you need to have. The ability to throw the ball from the left hash all the way across the field to the right sideline lets you know that he's got plenty of strength. And so often defenses will give a quarterback that wide side of the field. But if you've got a quarterback that's got enough arm strength to attack that, then you've got to roll those cornerback up. And a five yard pickup is set up second and five. Don't need to punch it in just yet. They can get inside of the 10 and still have four more chances. Well, Fleming stays on his feet. And now uses his feet, trying to get to the edge. This will bring up a third down. For Fleming, good recovery, but Joseph Thomas ran him down. The MIAC Defensive Player of the Week. Had a big game last week, 14 tackles, a career high. You can tell that Fleming's going to stumble here. Good balance. That shows you the athleticism that he has to maintain his balance and still get back to the line of scrimmage instead of taking a loss. And this is one of our impact players, as you mentioned. Joe Thomas had that massive game last week. 14 tackles defensive player of the week in the conference very active for them at what they like to call that bandit position he's got to be all over the field Florida A&M had a drive stall in their first opportunity that's that bunch formation yep. again where they like to attack the middle of the field Fleming fires has Lennon helmet pops off and immediately the play is whistled dead but he had enough yardage for the first down he picked up seven good effort from Lenworth Lennon who's hauling him in left and right to start this ball game. And that was a nice, good old fashioned hard hit right there. You talk about gang defense. This is how he tackles a, as a whole. See, they take the underneath route, good read by the quarterback, and whoo, coming in from that inside position, making a good knock on the ball is Courtney Ingram, number 11. And I think Lennon showed you some toughness there. He held on to the football. So he can wear defenses out by catching the ball in space. He's done that four times already today. First and goal, it's McBurst. And great pursuit. Get over that time from Lataris Douglas, part of that very solid linebacking core for South Carolina State. Second and goal is you got to look at Buddy Pugh. He's done very well against FAMU in his career. 8 and 0 lifetime against the Rattlers. This will be a tough one here tonight. This is the Florida AM team that's very motivated. They realize what's on the line for them. Now once they get close to the goal line, McBurst leaves and you see Levante Page, number 32 in white, joins Fleming in the backfield. He's got nine touchdowns on the ground this season. He's the power guy. Very good pass catcher. And he slides down in third and goal coming up. No gain on the play. And now Florida A&M. A big third down coming up. They had their last drive stall. Good recognition by the Bulldog defense of knowing when Page is in the game down on this part of the field they're probably going to try and get him the football they've been playing very vanilla in their coverage South Carolina State nothing fancy nothing sophisticated and with Florida and them already in what you would call field goal range I wouldn't look for them to bring too much pressure down here just good red zone defense Bulldogs looking for a stand Rattlers looking for a score on third and goal Fleming knocked down and fourth down good coverage from Darius Drummond the redshirt freshman 
and an interception against FAMU a season ago. He does a nice job of forcing a fourth down, and the Rattlers will settle for a field goal. A good discipline here by the Bulldogs. Take a look. You see everybody right here on the goal line. They're not going to back up, keep everything in front of you, and then once the ball's released, come up and make the tackle. That's how you play solid red zone defense. This will lead to a 24-yard attempt from Trevor Scott. Been solid so far. He helps the red zone efficiency of the Rattlers. And he puts Florida AM on the board first. So already more points in this ball game than they had last season when they were shut out by South Carolina State. Two very long drives for the Rattlers. They put up three on this second chance. Hey, Stacy. Odds of four of you being named Stacy, one in six million. Odds of Stacy winning a prize, one in four. A million dollars! Monopoly at McDonald's is back and better than ever. Odds of LeBron James winning seven championships, one in... Come on, man. Odds of LeBron winning a prize, one in four. Free fries. Play now because this year, one in four wins. With 125 million winning game pieces for cash and great prizes, the odds are irresistible. Monopoly at McDonald's, the simple joy of... I won! TireRack.com is more than just an online tire resource. We're your one-stop online tire know-how, know-who, and know-what. Speaking of that, know what else? Our prices are practically unbeatable, and that's all you need to know. We're revolutionizing the way you buy tires. Be ready for winter. Visit TireRack.com to shop Bridgestone's complete selection of Blizzak winter tires, designed to provide extra traction in snow, ice, and cold. TireRack.com. Research. Get a look at the marching 101 of South Carolina State. Now Florida A&M with a three to nothing lead here in this first quarter. And this is one of the more famous historically black college bands in the country, it's the marching 100. And we get the battle of bands every week, but I'm gonna tell you, it's gonna mean something now at halftime because That's the Florida right. A&M band is called the marching 100. The South Carolina State band is called the marching 101. And right. you know why they call them the marching 101? Because they say when 100 is not enough, enough, you gotta have 101. And the Rattlers are here in the building, so I'm pretty sure they're gonna try and show everybody that 100 Rattlers can get the job done. Trevor Scott got it done with a field goal from 24 yards out. A couple of long Florida A&M drives to start the day. As Chris Merrill gets set to return alongside Jalen Simmons. Shorter kick. Opportunity for Merrill from the 14-yard line. Great pursuit from Florida A&M's coverage. Just a six-yard return. Good effort from the Rattlers. They're up 3-0. Bulldogs have the ball when you return. More and more folks are trying out Snapshot from Progressive. Florida A&M has a 3-0 lead on South Carolina State. Just over two minutes to go in this first quarter. Here's what's on tap between these two teams and what we'll talk about over the course of the day. Last season's matchup. Again, Florida A&M has lost eight consecutive meetings. We'll look at some of the Pro Football Hall of Famers as well as the Secretary of Defense being one of them. And it's gotten very tight in the MEAC. Norfolk State, a big loss on Thursday night at the hands of Bethune-Cookman. Things have gotten very interesting at the top of the MEAC standings. We'll talk about that as well. We'll break it down with Jay Walker. Buddy Pugh trying to make it four consecutive MEAC championships. Had a share of last year's. Richard Q on just the fourth snap of the day for South Carolina State. He finds Thomas Williams for a pick of up a dozen yards. I think many fans last time they saw Richard Q, he got it put into action against a Bethune-Cookman defense that was very aggressive. Week two. Didn't play his best football, but the one thing the coaching staff said is he's night and day compared to what you saw back then and what you're going to see now. Very good football player, making good decisions with the ball, and they think now that the offense is actually a little bit more explosive than it was because he brings the passing and the running element where Wiley was basically a quarterback that would hurt you with his legs. They send Williams in motion. The read for Q. A good decision here and a long run. Richard Q run out of bounds by Marvin Ross. He 
This is that zone read play that you see, which is the key to a spread offense, and you're going to do an option off the end man on the line of scrimmage from that defensive end position. Q does a good job of recognizing him right here. If that guy goes down, then Q's got to go with it. He goes with the running back. Q talks it, calls his own number, gets it to the outside, shows you some good athleticism. Pick of 41 yards on the play, and Ashton Jordan breaks it loose to the sideline. Ross got to him on this play, but a flag is thrown. This is thrown near the sideline. Ross already breathing heavy after having to chase down a couple of good runners. Offside, defense, number 46. That penalty is declined. First down. And they'll take the Jordan first down run. Darrell Davis tells you about it. And South Carolina State, just three snaps. They went three and out on their first drive. And all of a sudden, a couple of plays later, they are inside of the red zone. And that's why when you play a team that's running that spread offense, you've got to play assignment football. If you're the defensive end, you've got to recognize what the quarterback's doing. Another read for Q, looking for the end zone, and incomplete. Marquez Hamlin, the Lamar South Carolina native, going up high for it. His brother Marquis, a four-year starter at South Carolina State, second down. You'll see Q taking the shot at the end zone. A lot of contact down there, but good attempt by Hamlin to try and make the one-handed grab, just unable to come down with the football. Darrell Stewart was in on the coverage. Florida A&M leads the nation. FCS, FBS, Division II, and Division III football in interceptions this year. And South Carolina State, inside of the red zone, has not been as efficient as they would like to be. 72% is not bad, but not in the MEAC, where a lot of teams are efficient. Caleb Davis using his feet and pushed out by Ross. A flag thrown. But Davis getting close to the goal line. We'll see what this flag is about. Holding offense, number 34, 10 yard penalty, second down. It was Chris Merrill out of the backfield. They use Merrill to try and seal the edge in order to get Davis around that sideline. You'll be able to see this right on the top of your screen. Once he gets around the outside edge, see this is Merrill right here in that slot position there. He's got him. He's trying to seal him. Oh, that's why he was able to get outside that's tippy right. toe on that sideline to pick up that yardage. Buddy Pugh and the Bulldogs are pushed back. This is where the Rattlers are dangerous. They've got a number of interceptions because they blitz so much. So look for some type of pressure to come for Florida A&M. Quick throw from Q. Gains a lot of that yardage back. Tyler McDonald leads this team in receptions. He picks up 15 yards and sets up South Carolina State here. This is a good job. Watch them move the pocket, and then you forget about the backside. Then they step up, make a good, strong throw to Tyler McDonald, who's really stepped up his play this year at the loss of one of their other wide receivers. They need two yards. Q trying to give it to him, banging his way to the five. Looks like he's going to be a little bit short. He got about a yard, and that might be the final play this first quarter. Two very good, explosive, defensive teams. And just three points on the board after 15 minutes of play. A Trevor Scott field goal, the only score. Huge MEAC game. A 2-2 two two Rattler team, a 3-1 Bulldog club. And we are one quarter through with South Carolina State threatening to start the second. I don't want to get up. I don't want to go to work. I hate mornings. Great, I have 20 minutes. Getting set for the start of the second quarter, South Carolina State inside of the Florida A&M 10-yard line, and a fourth down coming up. The fans enjoying what's going on right now. We'll see if South Carolina State well, can the make it happen. Look at that. A5 a fraternity in the build. That's right. Richard Q has engineered a very solid drive. South Carolina State is the best fourth down converting team offensively in the MEAC. Trying to take the lead. I'm not a fan of teams fourth and one when they get the quarterback in shotgun formation. You got to gain four yards just to get to the line of scrimmage. Option for Q. He's brought down and Florida AM with a big stop to force a turnover. Nicholas Hollinghead with another sack. The senior from Cocoa, Florida, gives the Rattlers the football. 
You know, you, you live by the spread, you kind of die by the spread. You're playing from that shotgun position. All you have to do is stay firm and stout on the interior line play. And you're going to see nowhere to go in the middle. It's just blocked up there. And Hollyhead did a great job of recognizing that he was going to be the unblocked man and making that tackle in a small space. Good job by the Rattler defense of getting the crucial home uh, on the road, getting that stop so they can preserve their three-point lead. This is a very good defensive line in FAMU this season, leading the MEAC in sacks. Hollinghead, just one of the great seniors on this FAMU squad. Well, Florida A&M with a turnover on downs, and they'll take over the football up 3-0 early in this second quarter. Team is not something you do alone team is plural team is arms legs blood sweat and soul a lot goes in I'll Tariq McBurse Florida A&M with a turnover on downs taking over the football inside of its own 10 yard line and I'll Tariq McBurse with a two-yard run on first down as Damian Fleming takes over on second down. Eddie Rocker into the backfield for FAMU. His defense has done a very impressive job early, holding off South Carolina State when they were threatening in the red zone. Rocker takes it to the right and gets upended by Dominique Ellis after a couple of yards. Third down coming up for the Rattlers. They've moved the ball very well. They've possessed the ball for a significantly longer amount of time, almost eight minutes more than South Carolina State. And that, that, that's a good point there if you want to do that. You know, if you think about how significant the that stop was by Florida and them on defense. Now, if they have the ability to get a drive going, put some more points on the board, preferably a touchdown, then you put South Carolina State down by two scores compared to a state that kicked the field goal. It would have been tied at the very least, and they would have been down by one score no matter what happens. FAMU needs seven. Fleming passing for it. He gets to the outside. Picks up Michael Etheridge's tight end a couple of yards short. They got six. Gonna bring up fourth down for FAMU. They, they won the mental battle right there. You know, you had the ball backed up from your defense doing the hold. They managed to pick up eight, nine yards, almost get a first down. Now if they can get some good special teams play and force South Carolina State to have to drive the football again. This is a FAMU football team I think is playing very much inspired. You know, I saw yep. this game a season ago and South Carolina State just beat up the Rattlers. Looks like FAMU's coming with some fight today. Holdren, who had a great punt to pin South Carolina State deep his first time. He'll push him back to the 44 as it's down. So South Carolina State will take over with decent field positioning. We've got a very impressive guest for you coming up as well. One of the great Bulldogs, Robert Porsche. Well, join us when you come back. Three nothing Florida A&M lead with 12:47 to go in this first half. And South Carolina State has the football, and we've got a South Carolina State Bulldog in house right now. Robert Porsche, one of the great Detroit Lions, a 13-year NFL veteran, joins us in the booth. And Robert, first off, thanks for joining us. Really appreciate hey, it. Hey, welcome to Orangeburg. <laughs> It's been, it's been nice yeah. so far. I'm quite sure you've been here a few years. And <laughs> yeah. Hopefully you know, today's experience will be a lot better than it was when you were playing. <laughs> no, I, I'm, I'm glad you're here because they always talk about size. See, I'm an NFL quarterback. That's right. This is NFL D line. When you see the size differential, you got guys like this landing on you. You got to have a little cushion, don't you? I'm smaller than you are, man. What are you talking about? <laughs> one, of, one, of, one, of the, one of them stayed in shape over the last couple of years. I'll let you guys decide at home who's done it. But, I mean, this has been – a lot of fun for you, I imagine, to see. Buddy Pugh has continued to do good work for South Carolina State. Yes. Three straight MEAC championships in position. If they can really work out the rest of the schedule, they're in position to pick up another MEAC championship. As they have good field position, and Richard Q fires to the sideline, and Tyler McDonald with a solid first down catch and run. But this has to make you feel pretty good, being a South Carolina State alum, seeing what Buddy Pugh is doing with this program. He's, he's done a phen phenomenal job since uh, taking over. Uh, he's just kind of picked right up where Coach Jeffries uh, left off, who I played for. And Coach Pugh, with the experience he had in high school and over at uh, University of South Carolina and coming back, I, I, I just love what he's doing, and I always try to help support. 
him at whatever it is he needs me to do. Now, one of the things that I, I noticed when you played here under Coach Jeffries, it was a smash mouth bulldog football at triple right. option. With this spread offense you see now and the stress they're putting on defensive ends, what's the biggest change you've noticed in the football game? Well, that's a good question. One of the changes I've noticed, they are uh, calling all the plays from the sidelines. So yeah. it's almost like no huddling. So I can't imagine how good of a shape the uh, players have to be on the defensive side of the ball to compensate for that because you don't have that time in between plays like you used to years ago. But that was years ago when I played. Q on second and short. Trying to pick up the first down on a pass. And Dwayne Clark couldn't haul it in. This is what we saw actually uh, not too long ago, Robert. You came back to South Carolina State and you continue to do this. A great philanthropist. You continue to have business opportunities for yourself and others around you, but you donated $300,000 to the scholarship fund here at South Carolina State. What does it mean to you to, to be able to give back to this place that gave you so much and an opportunity to play in the NFL? Well, I think that's what it boils down to. This place gave me a lot um, and helped get me on my way. And uh, I think that's the least that I can do. I think that's what all players want to do if they're in a position to do that. So a lot of people help make that possible. And I'm just grateful that we're moving forward. And our, our goal is to grow that endowment from 300000 to 500000 That's wonderful. Yes, we're, sir. That, that's yes, excellent. Sir. And Robert, first off, again, thanks for uh, thanks for taking the time out to join with us. As a Chicago native, it's a little bit uh, kind of humbling, really, <laughs> to stand next to you. But uh, really do appreciate you coming. I know you two had a couple of good battles when uh, you're in the NFL together. Well, I watched him play. You know, <laughs> watching him with Barry Sanders, those Detroit Lions. I tell everybody, the record didn't show how physical that contest was whenever you took on the Lions. I appreciate the time, guys. First and ten for Richard Q. He bangs his way into the end zone for a 12-yard touchdown. South Carolina State has taken the lead. Now, if the offense is going to play like that while Porsche is on the air, maybe he needs to stick around and bring in the good luck charm. I mean, they just started moving the ball up and down the field once Robert got on the microphone. Richard Q, I think, had the sense, really, <laughs> that, that Robert was talking to us. Q with a rushing touchdown, and now he'll bend down for the hold for Blake Erickson. Forty nine yard drive in just five plays and sixty one seconds and Richard Q taking over making just his third career start puts in a rushing touchdown and puts South Carolina State in front. We know he can throw the football but he can still run the football as well. Good job by the quarterback going against the grain running to color there. It's not there on the outside. Great flow by the linebacker core of Florida A&M and Q has the ability to cut to go against the grain and get in the end zone for the touchdown. But one thing that drives all defensive coordinators crazy is having mobile quarterbacks. You hear the term used all the time, the dual threat athletes. Well, that's a reason right, right there. You can have the play called, you can have be in the perfect defense, but a quarterback that can run can break down the total defense. Fifth rushing touchdown of the season for Richard Q, the redshirt sophomore from Florence. And we saw him play against Bethune Cookman in week two. Buddy Pugh told us before that game that I want to play Richard Q. He's a young guy, doesn't have a ton of experience. I want to see how he reacts playing a great defense like Bethune Cookman. And he said something that's almost kind of eerily foreshadowing. You're a snap away from losing one of these guys. Sure enough, when Derek Wiley gets hurt on October the 1st against Norfolk State. Lost him. Richard Q steps up. Did a decent enough job against Norfolk State, but he has really matured and turned into a solid quarterback. And now in today's college football more than ever, I think you have to have two. Because of the spread offense, the quarterback's going to run the ball more, and they're going to get hit. And they probably can't last the whole season. Edmund Baker on an 11-yard return out to the 21-yard line. This was the meeting last season. South Carolina State has dominated as of late this season series but last year October the 2nd this was the first MEAC game of the season Blake Erickson was a stud he went four for four in field goals and the only touchdown of the game was scored by one of the great quarterbacks in MEAC history Malcolm Long a 19 nothing South Carolina State win part of the great defensive effort from South Carolina State a year ago. And I thought Florida A&M played very well in that game as well. I mean, they held South Carolina State to only 19 points, but that was a physical contest, and the Bulldogs really did dominate both aspects of the ball. Fleming looking for Lennon. He overthrows him with Ellis on the coverage on first down, so maybe a little bit of a surprise for Florida A&M to try to catch South Carolina State nabbing. 
You go back to that series history and you just got to look at it. Eight consecutive wins for South Carolina State in this series. Buddy Pugh has never lost to Florida A&M. This is the longest winning streak. And this is a series that goes back to 1930. These two teams have seen each other often in the last 70 plus years. What you call one of those long time MEAC rivalries. They've been playing each other forever it seems like. And you know, it, goes in, it goes in waves. Florida a and had the upper hand for a while. Then South Carolina State's got it now. And Buddy Pugh has done a great job in meeting the Rattlers in this time here in Orangeburg. Second and 10. Fleming fires again. The flag is thrown. It was thrown in the offensive backfield. Illegal motion on the offense. That penalty is declined. Third down. You know, big third down for the Bulldogs. Defensively, as Joe Taylor trying to convert right now for FAMU. Then you see the running back there just start moving towards that line of scrimmage a little bit early in anticipation of getting the block there, trying to do his blocking responsibility. But think about what's going on with Florida AM. They came out open and drive, looked very good, running the football, running the football, throwing it every so often. Now they come out first down pass, second down pass, third and long is not the Florida AM recipe for success. They have Levante Page in on third down. Page can't make the cut up the field. Donovan Richard got to him. Four yard pickup on third down. And good effort from that linebacking core for the Bulldogs to force a punt. And Donovan Richard, he's a good one. The leading tackler on this Bulldog defense, very active. And He's got leads this team with five tackles for losses in the other team's backfield. That's just good sound defense playing that interior line position. After that great FAMU drive to start the day and those first couple of drives really the last two have been three and out for the Rattlers. From the 32 it's Drummond. Drummond has a seam. Only the kicker to beat. Drummond to the house. Get that. A 68 yard return for Darius Drummond. The first return for a touchdown this season. Yeah, great job here of setting up the blockers there. Then once he gets to the outside, watch the cut inside with the ability to go outside once the punter is in his sights and does a good job of tiptoeing that sideline, staying in. Drummond with a huge punt return there for a touchdown. Great execution by South Carolina State. An absolute momentum shift. Florida A&M was moving the ball well on those first couple of drives, but they stalled. They settled for a field goal. But Richard Q engineers a touchdown drive. The defense goes three and out. And Darius Drummond takes it all the way home, and Blake Erickson makes it an 11-point lead for the Bulldogs. Its design inspires. Its power impresses. It's thin, light, and built without compromise. Call or click today. So now I think at this point you're down you've given up 14 uncontested points and for Florida A&M when you get the ball back get back to that running game still plenty of time in this contest you got to find back your offensive identity. An illegal procedure penalty but South Carolina State is claiming that one of the up men for Florida A&M touched the football which obviously would make it a live ball and the ball would be out or the ball would be spotted where it went out of bounds if a Rattler had indeed touched that ball. Otherwise it would be an illegal procedure penalty and give FAMU very good field position. Kick out of bounds on the kicking team. The ball we place at the 40 yard line. First down. So no touch as ruled by Darrell Davis and the crew. It, it was pretty close. It, it seemed as if Correction. the ball would have been touched. Elected a five yard penalty and a re-kick. No, I think he was going to touch it, but the yep. ball took a nosedive on him and went to the turf and went out of bounds. And that's the right call, but they'll actually decline it. They'll add it to the add it before the kick and they'll actually re-kick this ball. 
ESPNU is the home for passionate college football fans as our experts break down the top schools in the nation in a weekly three-hour special. Don't miss any of the unfiltered conversation about the hot topics in college football. It's the experts on ESPNU Tuesdays at 1 and 7 Eastern. Who's that right there at the bottom? Right there. Oh, on my telly, man. That's an old Scott Walker there. Get to go there. I really like doing that show. I mean, you know, I tell people if you haven't seen it before, you know, it's Absolutely, like yeah. it's like barbershop talk. Yep. We're just talking sports, just talking sports. Nothing's out of bounds. And we'll talk everything from Heisman conference realignment, national championship, especially with the BCS champions standings coming out. I'm sure we'll be doing a lot of discussion about that. Baker from the 18 yard line can't get to the edge. More good pursuit from this South Carolina State kicking unit. Jeremy White, a Columbia native, cutting down Baker before he can take it out any further. So now the time I think we're we're going to see if Damian Fleming really has everything that they talked about. True freshman, and I, I'm a believer that it takes you one run through the MEAC conference before you really start to have success coming in this conference thinking you're going to beat everybody won't happen but you're at that point in the season now where you're closer to being a sophomore than you and a freshman they've got to trust him and see what he can do what type of leadership ability he has McBurse in the backfield the play fake pressure coming and Fleming connects at the 45 yard line Christian Thompson finally brings down Kevin Elliott after a 17 yard catch and how about that poise from Fleming? I mean, that was nice. He knows he's going to get hit. They don't fall for the fake. You see Elliott coming, throws the ball to the second level on a bootleg to Kevin Elliott. That's a great job. So often you see a young quarterback come out, get the fullback right there in the flats for the three-yard gain. Aggressive throw, but a good throw by Fleming. Over 80 yards passing on the day. Ten minutes to go in this first half. Bubble screen for Lennon. Into South Carolina State territory with a flag thrown. Seven yard pickup for Lenworth Lennon, who has been the favorite target of Fleming today. And a holding penalty will bring this back. Holding. Offense. Number 81. 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. Catch Dwayne Harvey, a freshman from Tallahassee. You see on the wide receiver screen there, he's got that jersey right there. See it right there, and it's actually 83. That's yeah, Baker. 81, that's Edmund Baker, yep. the wide receiver there. Grabbing that jersey, once you you can tug it, but it's got to be almost like a grab and release. You hold on to it, they'll call that holding penalty every time. That puts him at first and 16. You need to get to the 43 of South Carolina State. Fleming, quick toss for Baker. Get out to the 47. A six yard pickup, so right back to the original line of scrimmage. So second and 10 coming up for the Rattlers. Second time today we've seen Fleming make that wide side throw. Not a lot of college quarterbacks can do it effectively, such as Fleming having the arm strength and the accuracy. That tells you how much upside potential this young man has. And you can make that throw there, the scouts say is. He can make all the throws we ask him to make. Three on the line for South Carolina State, including James Fullwood, who just checked in. McBurse in the backfield. Fleming wants the quick throw. Brian Timms has a convoy of blockers. Timms, a good catch and run. Thompson finally dragged him out after a pickup of 24 yards into South Carolina State territory and another good throw from Fleming. If Florida ain't him, is going to see, recognize the blitz is coming from this side. So what do they do? They go away from it with the wide receiver screen here. Upfield, downfield, get it, block up there, find a crease, and turn on the Jets. Great job of going away from where the blitz is coming from. They caught him in a bad coverage, and they made him pay. 121 yards passing now for Fleming. Another screen. This one time to McBurse. 
out to the 16 yard line. 14 yard pickup. Ellis finally dragged him down. And McBurst now out of the backfield doing some damage. So everybody getting in on it. Yeah, they're trying to find who they can catch out of position. And you're going to see Quattlebaum right here, the outside linebacker from South Carolina State. This is his responsibility. He comes up. Ah, he gets stuck too far inside. They're able to throw the ball outside and get upfield to pick up a first down. And FAMU likes to use the edges, whether it's on the ground or on the passing game. They like to use the edges, and that makes things tough on South Carolina State defensively. Now they've got a fullback in the game right here, and anytime you see the fullback in the game for Florida a and they like to get him involved in the offense, and that's Ronald Jackson. Going out for the screen. Fleming trying to go against the grain. This might be a holding call. Fleming reaching for a couple of extra yards. Joe Thomas was there defensively but this one will likely come back holding offense number 58 10 yard penalty from the line of scrimmage second down Shelly Anthony a redshirt senior from Atlanta a transfer from Western Kentucky and Shelly Anthony he's the center for this Rattler offense and I don't see the hold. I see the block in the I back. I see a block in the back there, yeah. <laughs> yeah. They, we saw the flag before Anthony was involved on that play. Yeah. I guess you could see any one of those penalties. Well, first and 20. Well, a penalty forced a first and 16 for Famu, and they were able to convert that and get deep into South Carolina State territory. Now first and 20. Fleming with pressure from the backside coming. Good coverage from Pat Washington. The defensive end on Lennon. This is what's at stake coming into today. Again, no MEAC team has ever won a conference championship with three losses. Only once has it happened with two losses. That was a three-way tie back in 1988. And I think what they're hoping for is even if you don't come in first place with the FCS playoffs expanding to 20 teams in by it instead of 16, there could be a second team from the MEAC that'll get in. Last year there were two from the MEAC. South Carolina State got in to go along with Bethune Cookman. I think that's what they're really playing for. But if you're South Carolina State, you're thinking we can run the table and win the conference, control our own destiny. Second and 20. Fleming, all day to throw. Now running out of time. Switches fields and completes a pass to Elliott. What a good job by Kevin Elliott coming back to your quarterback. He'll grab 10 yards on that play and third down and more manageable coming up. That was a good play. And, you know, you've got to be concerned if you're South Carolina State with the lack of pressure being applied to the quarterback. All day to pass as you talk to, you see Fleming get outside. This is a long time last year, secondary to cover. Kevin Elliott does a good job of coming back to the football to get the completion. And now third and 10. FAMU is two for six on third down today. Light pressure thrown out to the sideline for Lennon and dragged down before he could get to the sticks. Mason Harris on the coverage. Just five yards and fourth down coming up and looks like FAMU is going to have to settle for another field goal. But that's the right choice you've got to make there. Offensive coordinator Lawrence Kershaw picking up a couple extra yards. They were just a missed tackle away from converting that third down opportunity. But you figure now if you can score right now, make it 14 6, you're still just down by a touchdown and a two point conversion. So you're still in it. This one from 25. Scott knocked one in from 24 to start today. He's good. The Rattlers will take the points. They trail by eight with 627 to go here in this second quarter. South Carolina State at home looking for an extra lead here when you come back. When you join together talented student athletes with great coaches at wonderful institutions of higher learning, you have all the resources you need to achieve success. The Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference was established on the principles of educating and preparing student athletes for the game of life. Comprised of 13 outstanding institutions, the MEAC continues its tradition of athletic dominance on the playing field and academic success in the classroom. The Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference, celebrating excellence. Now it's time for a one-of-a-kind part. Now that's progressive. Call or click today. 
The marching 101 of South Carolina State getting ready for the halftime show here in Orangeburg, South Carolina. The marching 100 of FAMU getting set as well. Battle of the band just about every week when you're in the MEAC or the SWAC and get a chance to watch it live on ESPN3.com or watch ESPN.com. This will be your first opportunity to see the the marching 100. 100 yeah, yeah, you're in for a little treat. How many, how many members do you think they have? Wow, it's kind of tough. <laughs> kind of tough. Average band. I mean, it's marching 100. Didn't you study? Call the marching I was, 100. I, was, I, was, I thought I thought my sarcasm would come out at that point. <laughs> played the Super Bowl a couple of years ago, actually. They have over 400 members. So. <laughs> We played uh, with Prince a few years back in the Super Bowl. South Carolina State will have it at the 20-yard line. This is what's left for the remaining uh, schedules for the top four teams in the MEAC. a and came into action today at 3-0. Norfolk State with that loss a couple of nights ago. And a and is struggling right now in their contest against Howard University, losing at the half. See if they'll come back and look at the main schedule for them. They've got to play Norfolk State, who's right there in second place. Florida a and still in it. South Carolina State in second place. So they, a lot of these teams have to play each other out. The key is if Norfolk State can win out, if they can beat A&T, Savannah State, Morgan State, they will be the MEAC champions because they won their head-to-head -head competition with South Carolina State. Right. So I think they're definitely in the driver's seat, even though they just lost last Thursday against an inspired Bethune-Cookman effort. Screen for McDonald. And a first down. He stepped out at the 34. A good catch and run for McDonald. Richard Q, who's engineered a couple of good drives today, seems to be a little bit shaken up. Ooh, wow. Yeah, a lot. Looks like it's a stinger, and he releases the ball. And so often, watch when you land. See, that's the key. What people don't recognize, when you get hit as a quarterback, the landing really does a lot of damage to you. It seems like that landed on that right shoulder, which is just throwing shoulder. Don't forget, Richard Q is just making his third career start. He came in for the injured Derek Wiley. The redshirt junior from Rockingham, South Carolina, and now they will send a backup into the ball game. Dwayne Clark, who's the backup tight end, is going to come in at quarterback. Clark was a backup quarterback in 2008, moved to the tight end spot in 2009. He's thrown four touchdown passes in his career. He'll hand off to Jalen Simmons, who bounces off tacklers and gets into FAMU territory inside the 35-yard line. Demarius Folsom finally banged him out, but how about the second effort from Jalen Simmons, the freshman from Charlotte? Inspired, but look at the poor job of tackling by number four, Terry Johnson, the cornerback. You come up, you got to make this hit right here. He's just standing, didn't push him out of bounds, allowed Simmons to pick up more yardage down there. He's going to play that cornerback. I know you don't like to hit, but you got to make the tackle. And Simmons on first down takes it inside the 30-yard line. Bobby Jackson got to him. No pickup of 18, and now pickup of five for Simmons. And there is Q. Banged up a couple of plays ago on the sidelines, getting checked out by the staff of South Carolina State right now. And you wonder if the Florida A&M defense has recognized that Q is on the bench. They're still playing pretty conservative. I would load the box and force him to throw the football. Simmons trying to cut it up the field. Good defensive play for FAMU by Justin Davis, the redshirt junior from Havana. Now how about this? South Carolina State loses their starting quarterback a couple of weeks ago. Richard Q comes in, starts to mature, starts to fill out this role very well. And now when he's engineered a couple of good drives, he has to come out due to an injury. And their backup tight end, Dwayne Clark, who again was a quarterback the last couple of years, has to take over and has to try to convert third and seven. And now the Rattlers showing the big blitz. Yeah, they got to bring that pressure to try and uh, try and force Clark to throw the football. And I don't know how willing South Carolina State's going to be to have Clark throwing the football. I wouldn't be surprised if they run it here. Clark will throw. He'll take a shot and he overthrows McDonald into double coverage. So you have Richard Q banged up right now and on the crutches that's Derek Wiley who was the original starting quarterback this season and was pretty solid was doing a solid job and we saw him against Bethune Cookman and he did a great job during the course of that game on the ground and in the air. Now Q on the sidelines so we'll see if he has a chance to come in later in this game but Blake Erickson will try to knock one through from 46 his career long is 48 he's done that twice he struggled a bit kicking field goals this season 
Well, this one is a beauty. He'd only missed eight field goals in his career coming into this season. He missed six this season. He was just six for 12, but that one picture perfect from 46 to give South Carolina State a double-digit lead. Aaron, you're all set. Great, thanks. Mike, thanks for doing that discount double check. You saved us hundreds. What was that? The discount double check? It's when we comb through your policies to make sure that you're getting all the discounts you deserve. No, I get that part, but you guys are doing my move. The discount double check move? That's my touchdown dance. So you're a dancer? No, I'm a quarterback. Oh, quarterback. More. I'm a robot. <laughs> mm -mm. Where's your finger? <laughs> get out of here. Aaron Rodgers got his. How about you? Rodgers! Discount double check! Get to a better state. State Farm. AT&T and Verizon charge you extra for going over two gigabytes of data. T-Mobile slows down your data speed. With Sprint, you don't get charged extra and you don't slow down. And Joe Taylor's Rattlers down by 11. And Edmund Baker from the nine yard line. Can he get to the outside? He cannot. Good play by Hamlin after a 23 yard return. We're in beautiful Orangeburg, South Carolina this week, but Jay and I will take a trip back to Alabama for one of the great events in college football. Birmingham, Alabama, and the Magic City Classic await us and you one week from now, 10.30 Eastern time on ESPNU. And not only is it a gala event, a lot on the line during this football game, but look at this. This is going to be one of the things that Jay Walker is going to be focused on. Backwards pass to Lennon. He can throw it if he wants to. Instead, he'll get the block from Baker and pick up first down yardage. Banged out at the 46. How about Lenworth Lennon? A broken trick play turns into a 15 yard pickup. Yeah, they actually had what they wanted on that play there. It was a double pass. They had a guy who was running downfield so deep, but he outran where he would come from. He bobbled the throw there. Wide receiver's taken off. He realized I couldn't get it to him. Then you just become an athlete right now. Get that block on the edge. And what an exciting play by Linworth Lennon. And Baker with two blocks on Devon Quattlebaum. Lennon has been very solid today. Half a dozen catches for 50 plus yards. Levante Page, the screen out of the backfield. He got a block and takes it into South Carolina State territory. Ellis pushed him out after a pickup of four yards. We mentioned the Magic City Classic, part of our schedule on ESPNU next Saturday. Auburn, a big one against Ole Miss. And they got walloped last week. Wake Forest, North Carolina. NC State, Florida State. You see the ACC, the SEC, and then you see that big SWAC matchup. A couple of teams at the top of the SWAC standings right now. Alabama State, Alabama AM. and Two teams that are ranked in the top ten in the Black College poll. Everything's on the line there. Winner there will probably represent the Eastern Division of the SWAC Conference in the championship game in December. And one of the most festive Black College atmospheres, college football atmospheres that you'll see. Six rush for South Carolina State. Fleming gets past that first line, diving for the first down. About five or six yards. I'm really impressed with what I'm seeing from Damian Fleming. Three-step drop. It's not there. Take off and run. You can't come all the way back on the other side of the field to make another read once you've committed to going to one side. If it's not there, tuck the ball. Just pick up one or two yards. Get yourself that much closer to having an attainable third and short situation. Just a yard to go. Al Tariq McBurse. Is the deep back. And McBurse hops over the 40 yard line for a first down. And that's the difference in the offense. If South Carolina State gets that third and one, fourth and one, they've got to go with that shotgun because their quarterback has never been underneath the center. Well, you're not going to play quarterback for Joe Taylor if you don't know how to go underneath the center and get a, a, a traditional snap. I hate to call that traditional now because that's the way yeah, all right. snaps used to be. But I mean, I'm surprised to hear their high school kids coming out that have never gotten under center in their whole career. Yeah. They come to college and they don't know how to get underneath the center. Big drive for FAMU right now. South Carolina State gets the football to start the second half. McBurst got away from Quattlebaum. Ellis was the first one to touch him there. And then a handful of Bulldogs got to him, but a flag throw. It's a short pickup for Al Tariq McBurst.
to be against the Rattlers. Holding. Offense, number 66. Ten-yard penalty. First down. It's the right tackle, Brandon Curry, a redshirt freshman from Texas. That's four FAMU penalties for over 50 yards. You've got an interesting situation that's starting to take place, you know, for South Carolina State. We know the Q is banged up on the shoulder. He's trying to warm it up. They've got the backup quarterback, the freshman, Wiley, warming up a little bit. So they right. may lose a red shirt year. To Darius Wiley, who has not played all that much this season. He's the younger brother of Derek Wiley. Listed as the backup quarterback. Dwayne Clark, the backup tight end, was in there first. Screen thrown out to Brian Timms. Timms has a lot of speed down the field, and he'll get to the 30. Just shy of the first down. 18-yard pickup after that penalty. But another flag throw. Misdirection is what Florida A&M has been able to do. Offensive coordinator Kershaw doing a good job of keeping the Bulldogs off balance, not knowing which direction they're going, and they're using the speed of South Carolina State's defense against them. And they had a big play there and also got a rough in the passer pillar right. to tap on additional yardage to ensure the Rattlers got the first down. You see the brothers Wiley, Derek on the left injured, to Darius, a redshirt freshman. You see older brother coaching younger brother right now for what could be a very important drive for Tadarius Wiley coming up. And I like that you have them there just to have your older brother there just take a calm down, right. relax, make you laugh a little bit. If your number's called, just be ready. After the personal foul penalty, good position right now for FAMU. Eddie Rocker trying to tiptoe and he picks up. 12 yards on the run and now inside the five yard line Florida A&M with a chance to put home its first touchdown of the day. And one of these little jet sweeps that they like to do from a stationary position. Rockers like a wide receiver playing running back so they don't have to move him in motion. They just give him the ball in the full sprint. He gets to the outside really puts a lot of edge on your perimeter defense. And a timeout is going to be used here. Bulldogs will use their first time out. Don't forget that Florida A&M had scored touchdowns on 11 consecutive red zone possessions. They're two for three today with two field goals. So South Carolina State has done its job defensively against the Rattlers. Yeah, they're they're you know a solid type of team and they do it. That's typically what they do. I mean, we talk about the emphasis that Florida A&M plays on special teams. Well, that equates to red zone efficiency, whether it's going to be a touchdown or a field goal. And I think they've really been good this season because they're non-traditional in the fact that they put a quarterback underneath the center. You know, we've we've seen Fleming time and time again get underneath the center. And when you can get underneath the center, then you can have that power running game. And a power running game always opens up the passing offense. Let's take a look at where I'm from. The Florida A&M roster by staying a handful of Florida kids more than just about anybody else on this Rattler team. Where I'm from is brought to you by the United States Marine Corps. Can you blame them? <laughs> if you were in the state of Florida, I think they look at you crazy if you had a majority of your roster coming from outside of the state with all that football talent down there. You talk about Florida speed. This is a fast Florida A&M team. South Carolina State looking for a stand defensively. Handoff goes to Page. Close to the goal line, Christian Thompson met him right before he could get to the end zone. Pick up of three yards, and Page has been the third down and short yardage guy. Page is going to bounce to the outside. Take a look at number 82 in white right there. Brian Times, the wide receiver, did a good job of engaging his man, allowing Page to get that much closer to the end zone. We'll send Kevin Elliott to the top of the screen. Page is the deep back with Ronald Jackson, the fullback in front of him. Second and goal. And a whistle. Just stop this play dead on a false start. Number 84, five-yard penalty, second down. And Mike Adams, the defensive coordinator for South Carolina State, he's had to prepare for three different guys out of the backfield. He has, and, and that, that's been a tough one there. And the defense has done a good job. But, I mean, what about Florida A&M right now? I like the job, the play selection call they've been doing, keeping Mike Adams a busy man today. But what about that? You got second and goal in the one right line and illegal procedure. That's one of those mental errors. You can't have that if you expect to win a lot of football games and put a lot of points on the board. Five penalties against the Rattlers today. 
It was second and goal. Line up at the six. Screen to Jackson. Knocked down by Ronell Ferguson. He'd missed the last two weeks with an ankle injury. They were so happy to have him back. That's one of the reasons why he gets his paws on that one to force third and goal. This would have been a touchdown here. They brought, brought everybody in so they could spread him out. You see the fullback was out there in the flat, wide open with nobody behind him. That would have been Ronald Jackson for the score. But a great job by Ferguson. If you can't get to the quarterback, once you see his arm go back, leave your feet and knock down the pass. Fourth drive of the day of 10 or more plays for the Rattlers, but they do not have a touchdown. Fleming, slant thrown to Tims for the score. Wow. What a throw. Second touchdown of the season for Tims and a huge one for the Rattlers to get right back in it. Great job by play selection being called there by the Florida Rattlers. They knew when they got in that bunch formation that Florida a and liked to play off coverage. Good play call, but an excellent throw by Damian Fleming to stick that ball in there on the chest of Brian Timms. Scott puts it through, and it's a four-point game. Remember, South Carolina State gets the football to start the second half, so... A major score for the Rattlers to get back within four. And this is what I mean by schematically. This is the bunch right here. We know that. Now, they're not worried about that, but what they're seeing is when we go to this formation, look what they do. They all come off the line of scrimmage. Then it just becomes a matter of pitch and catch, one-on-one -on, -one on the backside with a great throw from Fleming. Watch this ball thrown in the perfect spot where you allow your big wide receiver, Brian Timms, who's 6'3", 210 pounds. You put it on his body. The defensive back has to come around him or go through him. Good throw, good catch, good play call. And it was the 5'9", 180-pound Yari King who was on the coverage there. And Fleming, we, we talk about decision-making from a freshman. And even Mike Adams, the defensive coordinator for South Carolina State, said it. He's light years above playing as a freshman. He's playing at a level of maybe a junior. Provocative. Unexpected. Defiant. Jalen Simmons, along with Chris Merrill. Simmons from the six. The freshman gets tripped up. Simmons on the return. Devon Roberts made the stop, and now South Carolina State with a minute 11 to go will have Richard Q back in the football game. Had his shoulder banged up on the previous drive, and Dwayne Clark had to come in, the backup tight end. And you see what Q has done today, 70 yards on the ground, including that touchdown. And I'm curious to see how aggressive they'll be with their play selection right now. The minute and 11 to go in the half, do you risk your quarterback getting hit again, or do you wait to get him in the locker room at halftime? And Q has to dive on the football and a rough snap from Tristan Bellamy. And now the clock is moving. Florida A&M has a couple of timeouts to work with. And this, if you're the Rattlers, do you call a timeout? I here? would use it right now. You've got a team backed up. At least make them punt the ball so you can set up a punt return, steal some points here with two timeouts to go. Now I'm pretty sure South Carolina State's going to take their time and they'll be content to run off as much clock as they can. The Rattlers showing pressure. They lead the Miak in sacks. They're a heavy blitzing team. Kevin McGuirk, the offensive coordinator of the Bulldogs, had planned for this. Clock continues to move down under 30 seconds in the play clock at four. Bobbled snap. Recovery goes to Jordan. And he's tripped up by Justin Davis. Yeah, I don't know why if you're the Rattlers, you don't use a timeout here. And there will be a timeout used now with 17 seconds to go, and that will be a Florida A&M timeout. But I feel like with a minute to go, with second down, you use a timeout, you put yourself in good shape. Yeah, you've got two timeouts there. You had a team that was looking at second and 20. Call that timeout, then third down, call another one. They've got to punt the ball back to you. Uh, I, I just say it's one there. I don't know why you call it with 17 seconds left when you could have called one with 54 seconds left and then used another one. At least give a chance for your return game to do something with it. Maybe take a shot downfield. 
And a timeout left for the Rattlers, two for Buddy Pugh's team. 17 ticks to go in this first half. It was a 14 to 3 South Carolina State lead after that 68 yard punt return for a touchdown from Darius Drummond. And that was with about six and a half minutes to go. Since then, the field goal and the touchdown for FAMU, holding South Carolina State to just a three pointer. And gotten right back in this game with a late touchdown in the first half. Richard Q with third and 14 facing him. Play fake, pressure coming. A check down for Ashton Jordan. And he gets brought down by Folsom. 10 seconds to go. And he gets tackled out of bounds. So yeah. Nine seconds now. Yeah, that's going to stop the clock. So after this punt return, if you're Florida A&M, depending on how much time is rolled off the clock, you have the ability to maybe get a completion downfield and then stop the clock. It's a lot to ask in nine seconds, but still a chance for the Rattlers to do something with it. Let's see if Joe Taylor's team can pull a big trick here. And I guess the question becomes, do they go for the block or do they set up the return? Seems as if they're setting up for the return, so they're going to try and get one good return in and maybe allow their field goal kicker a chance to steal some points. And it's LaShawn Tooks waiting back at his own 35. Rugby style kick. We down to the 38. Still a second to go. And the clock will wind down. And that'll take us to the end of this first half. Welcome to the team. Here's your signing bonus. You're watching ESPN News College Football Primetime presented by McDonald's. We're in Orangeburg, South Carolina. Oliver C. Dawson Stadium in a very good game between the Bulldogs and the Rattlers in 17-13 South Carolina State lead. Alongside former NFL quarterback Jay Walker, Adam Amin on hand, lot at stake in this ball game. South Carolina State three and one in the MEAC, two and two record for the Florida A&M Rattlers. So many implications for the conference championship, maybe for an at-large for the FCS playoffs on the line. Both teams really put it out there, and it got very interesting. Florida A&M a big score late in the first half. I think Florida A&M realizes what's on the line for the Rattler program. They cannot leave Orangeburg with the loss if they expect to right. compete for a MEAC championship. They established a running game early, had some good success. Freshman quarterback is just as good as advertised. In South Carolina State, I think they got outplayed in the first half, but it came down to special teams with a huge play by the South Carolina State special teams. Let's take a look at it. It's, it's how South Carolina State got to a better state, brought to you by State Farm. Well, they were in control. They had everything going, but great job by Drummond of recognizing the crease in the coverage. Had a great field position when he fielded the ball, made a guy miss, and the punter, you're not going to bring him down. Not with an open field tackle. Good job there. That really changed the momentum of this football contest, and that's how the Bulldogs were able to get the, main, get the lead and, more importantly, maintain the lead. That's how they got to a better state, and here's our first half stats. And as Jay mentioned, early establishment of the running game for FAMU, but 114 yards on the ground for South Carolina State. A lot of those from Richard Q, their quarterback. Chris Merrill start to starting the second half. A flag is thrown back at the 10 yard line as Merrill took it out to about the 25. Marquise Hamlin getting flagged for an illegal block in the back, which will bring this back for South Carolina State. Buddy Pugh has not lost to Florida A&M. 8-0 in his career at South Carolina State against the Rattlers. Right now, though, the Bulldogs aren't going to be at full strength. You've got Q, their quarterback, that's a little banged up. The way that Florida A&M plays defensive style, their coordinator, Earl Holmes, they like to blitz. And what happens when you get teams that blitz a lot? You get a lot of hits on the quarterback. It's going to be crucial for South Carolina State to protect Richard Q. Q missed a drive in that first half. Ashton Jordan gets the carry and diving to the 20 yard line. This is what's at stake coming into action today. 11 yard pickup for Jordan on first down. Again, the 3 and 1 South Carolina State record coming into Saturday. Florida AM 2 and 2. No MEAC team has ever won a conference championship with three conference losses. And only once has it happened with a team with two conference losses winning the MEAC. So a lot at stake for these two teams. South Carolina State nor Florida AM can afford a loss. 
Q finds his man, Caleb Davis. Well, Davis hasn't done much through the air today, but he picks up 20 yards on that nice slant. Good job of just going down the seam, and you'll see Q stand strong in the pocket, delivers a great ball to Caleb Davis. And Davis is another one of those young men who play that wide receiver position. His number was called upon unexpectedly, and he's done a great job in spot duty. And there's Davis again. A couple of yards on that screen pass. He'll grab three. He's the cousin of Richard Q. They play high school football together as well. And Davis really took charge, I think, of this wide receiver core when Leno Elmore was declared ineligible. Caleb Davis is one of our impact players. And he's the reason why. With Elmore's ineligibility came into play, then Caleb Davis had to step up. And he's made a tremendous impact on this Bulldog offensive unit. Come on, that option play. Julius Pendergrass, the freshman spinning away. Cutting back the other way. Pendergrass with a first down inside of FAMU territory before he's dragged down by Folsom. Went from a read to an option to a throw to a cutback. Yeah, I mean, we talked about spread option with the read. He's going there, then he decides to throw the ball. That would have been a lateral. It's a great job by Pendergrass of making sure he made the catch first and then turned on the speed, chose some athleticism, and picked up the first down. Q, quick out route, and he's got Tyler McDonald. He gets swallowed up in coverage after a pickup of three. Devontae Johnson in on the coverage. Florida a &M is starting to crowd the line of scrimmage and bring pressure on every play. South Carolina State's doing a good job of combating that by going with quick intermediate throws, five-yard throws, not forcing Q to hold off to the football. He's getting rid of the ball quickly. Jordan gets the handoff on second and seven. A stiff arm for space. Has a blocker in front. Ashton Jordan cuts it into the end zone. South Carolina State touchdown. Jordan, touchdown, 46 yards. Longest run of the season for Jordan, 46 yards. A great individual effort. Once he bounces to the outside with the stiff arm there, missed tackle by Folsom, then it becomes a foot race to the outside, and he got that locomotive going. Didn't matter who tackled him then, he was going to get into the end zone. Great run by Ashton Jordan. Big plays for South Carolina State have been a factor for the Bulldogs. That 68-yard punt return for a touchdown in the first half. And now Ashton Jordan, the junior from Somerville, South Carolina, takes it all the way home. It's an 11-point Bulldog lead. Some of the coaches were ribbing Ashton Jordan on the sidelines, saying he was a little bit slow on what was a 46-yard touchdown run for Jordan to put South Carolina State in front by 11 yards. But he was efficient, and I like how one of the coaches came in and said, but he gets the job done, though. Dealt with an ankle injury last season. He was splitting time with Chris Massey, who is now graduated, with a transfer from the Citadel with a long run to... Give South Carolina State a double-digit lead once again. Edmund Baker from the seven-yard line. Baker with a head of steam. And he gets swung down. Good play by Toby Goodson in kick coverage. Let's take a look at our Lexus playbook brought to you by Lexus. I think it's going to come off of the bunch formation. What type of success will Florida A&M have? This is the bunch right here. The key is they know the coverage they're going to get. Can they get efficient throws out of it? If you know you're going to get quarter, quarter, quarter coverage, take the underneath stuff, and then once they start to come up, go with the one-on-one -on -one, uh, matchup that you'll get on the backside. Same thing here. Bunch formation here. One-on-one -on, -one on the bottom of your screen. If they can take advantage of that and get the ball to some playmakers, they can have an opportunity to put some points on the board. And they're going to open up the second half, their first offensive play in the bunch formation. There it is right there. They realize they're giving them trouble schematically. It opens up the throwing lanes. Al Tariq McBurst will get the handoff on first down. Stays on his feet under Donovan Richard was dragging him a little bit. Just a yard on that first down carry for McBurst, who, remember, is coming off a career high 214 yards last week, 218 yards last week. He only had 26 in the first half. And that's what happens. Once you start to make uh, a statement type of game, then the other team realizes that you're a valuable weapon to your offense. They game plan against you. 
McBurris, the MEAC Offensive Player of the Week, former Purdue Boilermaker. McBurris, great play by Ingram. Courtney Ingram got past his blocker and squared up McBurris nicely for a loss of two. It's third and long. Coming up from that outside linebacker position, Corey Ingram, five feet, ten inches, 200 pounds, plays that small outside linebacker position for this Bulldog defense with defensive coordinator Mike Thomas. Yep. Mike Adams, pardon me. And now third and long, five of ten today. Bam, you on third down. Washington coming in off the edge. A shot down the middle and a good catch by Kevin Elliott for a first down to the 46 yard line. Elliott picks up 18 yards. Good play from Fleming on third down again. I mean, standing strong. He can make all the throws you want. You see Elliott come around there, the third guy to go across the middle, and he's not afraid to give up his body. Kevin Elliott, one of the impact players for this Florida AM offense, he's the senior wide receiver. And what he really does well is run after catch. He uses a big frame to catch the ball, goes across the middle, as you just saw there, making those type of big plays. Well, the work out of the pistol here with Page in the backfield. Put Elliott in the slot. He's open down the middle instead. Fleming will take off. He dives close to the sticks. And they put. Elliott into the slot that time and he went straight up and I think Fleming wanted him but you talk about the defensive line getting your hands up at least trying to deter the quarterback and Fleming ends up turning it into a solid run. Yeah that's what he did if you catch him up in the air and take off running and more importantly as a quarterback if you realize there's man to man coverage that means there's nobody to account for the quarterback in the running game so you can always take off and pick up big chunks of yardage versus man to man coverage if you can find a crease. Well, original spot had it maybe a yard short, but Darrell Davis comes over and says that's a first down run for Fleming. Play fake to Page. Fleming, that underneath throw. Turning close to the first down marker once again. It's a good job here by Fleming. Watch the timing of the play action. Once he does the fake, turn around, square your feet, know where you're going with the football, deliver a strike. So often, young quarterbacks turn their back to the defense and they lose their whereabouts and they start trying to read the whole cover. Get a good pre-snap read, deliver the ball on time in the, with good pace. Damian Fleming getting it done. Came in at 54% completion rate. He just found another receiver. That was Anthony Ray, his first catch of the year. And now Levante Page hustling up the middle, and Joseph Thomas comes up to meet him. Good play by Thomas out of the linebacker spot. Thomas, great week last week. Levante Page leads the MEAC in scoring. And two guys that have really done good things for their respective ball clubs this season on both sides of the football. That's a first down short run. Set up at the 33 yard line. Bubble screen thrown out for Lennon's 10th catch of the day. Makes a couple of moves. A flag is thrown. A career high in catches for Lennon Lenworth. Redshirt freshman from Fort Lauderdale. Lennon, he said they love to get him the ball in space. And he's. Had the ball in space often today. They like to run the screen for him. This is going to come back. It was a late flag, actually. Turned around the oncoming defensive back on the outside by the wide receivers. Several times today we've seen that call. Offense. Ten yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. Bam you with another penalty chalked on. They're sixth of the day. And they've had good plays. They've had to bring him back. So first and 20. We've seen a couple of these be converted by Florida AM already today. 
Al Tariq McBurse on a screen pass. A bit close to the original line of scrimmage, six yard pickup. And the reason why Florida AM has been able to convert it is because of their coaching philosophy. First and 20, you don't have to get it all back in one play. You just need three plays of seven yards a piece, and you can pick up the first down. And you see right there, they get pushed way back, they settle for. A little screen pass to McBurse on the outside. He picks up seven yards. Now you're at second 11. You've got two chances to make it. Easier odds. Lennon goes across the middle. Second receiver does too. That's Edmund Baker. Baker will pick up nine yards and They'll set up a third and manageable situation here after a first and 20. Very makeable third and short. And watch this. You're going to see one guy go across the zone. That's not who he's going to. They're going to the second guy coming across the zone in Baker. One guy goes in to clear it out. You bring in the secondary receiver to sit softly in the zone and pick up positive yardage. Joe Taylor's team is above 50% on third down today. Bulldog crowd gets into it. Rattlers need three yards. They send McBurse out. What an open field tackle by Courtney Ingram to force a fourth down. Courtney Ingram coming from that outside position. We've seen him do this once before. Once he recognizes it, watch him get shot out of a cannon. Go underneath. Beat the attempted block by Kevin Elliott to make the big tackle for a loss. And Ingram, along with Devon Quattlebaum, they've split time at that outside backer position. Mike Adams says there's not a true starter. Those guys split it just about 50-50 because he has trust in both of those guys. Five on the play clock. They're trying to set up a field goal from Trevor Scott. It's a 48-yarder. They get the snap down. And Trevor Scott will miss it wide to the right. His long was 44. He cannot connect from 48 yards. And FAMU, a couple of penalties hold him back. And with 6.46 to go, South Carolina State maintains a double-digit lead. They take six minutes off the clock. They can't score three. to you by McDonald's and a good one today from Orangeburg South Carolina South Carolina State with a 24 13 lead under seven minutes to go here in this third quarter long touchdown run from Ashton Jordan to give South Carolina State that double digit lead and now after a turnover on downs and rather a missed field goal I should say Antoine Kerr from Richard Q gets a first down catch of six yards. That sets up second and four for the Bulldogs, who have a big opportunity to really dig a stake through the Rattlers right now. And Florida AM does not have the ability to get to Richard Q. Great job of play selection being called here by Kevin McGorkick, the offensive coordinator for South Carolina State. Short passing games, intermediate. Don't risk your quarterback getting hit, and he's completing the football. Richard Q missed a drive because of a banged up shoulder in the second quarter but came right back. He's had a very solid day so far. On that option read though, he gets run down by Bobby Jackson. Probably one of the only miscues by Richard Q tonight. When you've got that dive option, if it's not there, take it, just run forward. They can live with that. But you don't start moving backwards when that defensive end has got your number. It's a loss of 14 yards. And a good play from Bobby Jackson, the junior from Miami. That sets up third and long for South Carolina State. It's 
to the pressure from Florida A&M. They only rush four. That pass out of the reach of Marcus Lloyd on the sideline, and that brings up fourth down. So FAMU, after missing a field goal, does get the three and out, and now an opportunity to get the ball back. Yeah, they should get the ball back with good field position. You know, normally, Coach Buddy Pugh does not mind relying on his defense to go out there and win football games. But in this contest, this has been one of the few times I've actually seen a team have continued success in moving the football down the field versus this Bulldog defense. So they can't be too comfortable here in Orangeburg just yet because the Rattlers have figured out a way to move the ball on your defense. Pressure came from FAMU's punt team, the return team, and Erickson and the Bulldogs down that at the 43-yard line, just a 29-yard punt. FAMU's got the football with five minutes to go in the third. This big, that big, whatever, bring it on. Oh, Guys live their life a little differently. And we get it. So we built sport clips exclusively for you. We know happiness is a big screen TV, a legendary hot steam towel, and a great haircut from men's and boys specialists. Sport clips. It's good to be a guy. Find the store near you and ask for our MVP treatment. Nine nine four. On the campus of South Carolina State University, Orangeburg, South Carolina. Very short drive from Columbia and a couple of hours south of Charlotte. Make sure to visit our Facebook page at facebook.com slash ESPNU. Who do you think will win the Black College National Championship this season? And Buddy Pugh's team right in the mix of things right now as they enter action in a 4-3, and 3-1 three, three and one in the MEAC. His team on defense and FAMU down 11 with the football in good field position. Damian Fleming can't get to the edge. He gets swallowed up, but a flag is thrown. Late flag to Davis. Offense, number 64, 10-yard penalty, first down. Left tackle, Jerry and Moreland. This is the Black College football poll. South Carolina State ranked number three. Alabama State, number one. We'll see them next week in the Magic City Classic. Norfolk State, number two, coming in action this week. Yeah, I think they'll drop because they lost on Thursday, right. so that's not taking that into account. Tough, often you don't see teams win with three losses, and I, although those have been some losses against some very good football teams, South Carolina State, I don't. I can't see him do. It. I think number four is a dark horse. Is that right? Jackson State. Okay. Ineligible for the SWAC title, but if they go ten and one, a lot of people around the country are going to think this is a really good football team. And their only loss on the year has been to a very good Alabama State team. On first and twenty, pressure comes in. Pat Washington picks up the sack. Eighteen and a half of those in his career, and a nine-yard loss, forcing second and a mile. Pat Washington comes from that defensive end position there. This is going to be him right here. And you're going to see him just go mano a mano, get underneath the shoulder pads, lower it, the shoulder, get a good leverage, and he actually beat Jerry and Moreland, the offensive tackle there right away. Pat Washington comes up with a big hit on the quarterback. Second sack of the day for South Carolina State. So a holding on Moreland, and then he gets beaten by Washington to force second and 29. And directly responsible for 19 yards lost right now. Fleming, he's going to get eaten up again. Ronald Ferguson was right in the mix of that as well. And that's a loss of two. Lataris Douglas was the first one to bring the pressure from the backside. That was one of the few times we've seen Fleming look like a freshman tonight. Left the pocket too soon, had plenty of time, tried to run. And there was nowhere to run with the football. He could have stayed in the pocket, given his wide receivers a little bit more time to get open downfield. And now Joe Taylor sees his team in a third and 31 situation. Short pass thrown out to Timms. Got to get a little bit of extra yardage and Pat Washington got to him one more time 11 yards and that makes the punt a little bit easier. Under three minutes to go here in quarter number three. 
FAMU'S DEFENSE IS GOING TO NEED ANOTHER STOP AS THEIR OFFENSE, WHICH HAS HAD THE BALL FOR A MAJORITY OF THE DAY TODAY, JUST HASN'T CONVERTED THE OPPORTUNITIES THAT THEY'VE HAD. MISSED FIELD GOAL, HAVING TO SETTLE FOR A COUPLE OF FIELD GOALS, HAVEN'T BEEN ABLE TO PUNCH IT IN EVERY CHANCE THEY'VE GOTTEN. Aldrin PUNCHS IT AWAY AND IT GETS A VERY FRIENDLY FAMU ROLL NEAR THE 26-YARD LINE. 41-YARD PUNT. ESPNU is the home for passionate college football fans. Check out the experts at 1 and 7 Eastern every Tuesday on ESPNU. Unfiltered conversation, as my man Jay Walker would say. Barbershop talk, except you're talking about football. And Jay will be on the panel this week as well. The experts, 1 and 7 Eastern on Tuesdays, ESPNU. These are the fine minds that will join you this week. I'll tell you what I really like having on there is when you have a coach on there with Bob Davey, you know, Luganbill, myself, Seahorn, we can talk as players. But having the court shell in there to kind of keep us level headed, even keel, really helps. Ashton Jordan, last time he touched the football, he had a 40 plus yard touchdown run. That time, no gain on the play. And Demarius Folsom came over to check him. That's about from Patrick Scott, a junior from Tallahassee, the Stanford transfer. Well, a handful of transfers you'll see all over the MEAC, all over the SWAC, a lot of Division I FBS guys that have made the transition into these schools. This might be an illegal substitution. On the offense, having more than 11 players for more than three seconds. Five-yard penalty, second down. As Julius Pendergrass, the freshman, was in on the huddle. That was great clarification. Yeah. Having more than 12 players in the huddle for more than three seconds. Right. You, I mean, you're going to have got extra guys in the huddle every now and again, but you got to check in and out quickly. Well, the freshman with the late exit, and it's second and 15 for Richard Q. And I think if you're Florida a and you've got to create some offense right now defensively. You've got to bring some pressure, sell out, try and get to the quarterback to get the turnover. One-on-one -on -one opportunity, and the pass thrown behind Dennis Rowe. Redshirt freshman has one catch this season. It was thrown behind him by Q, and now third and 15. I talked to Kevin McGuirk at halftime, the offensive coordinator for South Carolina State. Asked him, how's Richard feeling? He said he had a bump on his shoulder from last week, and that's why he felt it be tightened up a little bit when he was hit in the second quarter, was out for that series. Well, so far in the second half, he hasn't been touched. So they've done a great job making some adjustments to protect him. Remember, FAMU leads the MEAC in sacks. Only four rush on this play. Check down to Ashton Jordan. And he'll get the first down. Good catch and run from Jordan to move the sticks for South Carolina State. 21 yards. And look at all the time that Q has to go through his progressions. He's just looking. Everybody's looking, looking left, looking right. Had time to come back to Jordan, who was just a check down, and able to pick up the first down. Jordan will get the read handoff. Not much here. Just a yard, and Demarius Folsom with the tackle once more. That's a name we haven't called much. It's been Folsom. Palmer and Pollock Mondays at 1 and 9 Eastern on ESPNU. Jesse and David will break down what happened this past week in college football. They'll let you know what's going on in the upcoming week's big games. It's the Palmer and Pollock Show on ESPNU. And I agree with you. Folsom's been a little bit more quiet than maybe we expected. Second and 10 for the Bulldogs with under a minute to go in the third. Q. Confident throw, but a little bit too tall for Dwayne Clark, who came in as a backup for Richard Q, and Q was out that series in the first half. You talk about Folsom. I mean, he's the best pass rusher for this Rattler defense, and he's a guy that they look to come up with that big play, that big turnover, and been kind of silent thus far this evening. And I think a lot of it has to do because schematically they haven't put him in that round line of scrimmage. They've really been spreading him out. He made a transition from a tight end to a linebacker when he was a freshman, and he's become a great defender. On third down, pressure comes. McDonald can't catch it as he turns around. Coverage from Devontae Johnson, and fourth down coming up. On third down, Q with a quick pass, and FAMU brought some pressure that time against him. Yeah, and Q's going to get rid of the ball on time, and that's one where the Bulldog wide receiver's got to come out of his break expecting to catch the football. He didn't. So the defense for Florida a &M, after giving up the long run, they've got a couple stops. If they can put some points on the board here with the offensive unit, get that going, they can get right back in this football game, make it a very interesting fourth quarter. Uh, Erickson punting. Erickson, good protection. LaShawn Tooks will not signal for the fair catch. He'll make the grab at the 22. And not much of a return after a 35-yard punt. So you look at the top 
teams in the MEAC, the top four clubs, this is who they have to play the rest of the way after this week. And it's interesting. I mean, you see South Carolina State, they go at to Howard University, so that'll be the one that they should win. A&T will be the one that will really determine what happens. Now, A&T is right now tied with Howard University, so that's a good one. I think the toughest one is A&T. I think Norfolk State has a really good shot at winning the MEAC crown right. there. Despite the loss a couple of nights ago against Bethune. Despite the loss, because when it comes down to the tie break, the first yep. judge is the head-to-head -head battle. And that was a huge win by Norfolk State to beat this South Carolina State team. Fleming, nearly 250 yards passing on the day. He finds Kevin Elliott across the 30-yard line. Pick him up nine yards. Good catch from Elliott on first down. And and a very solid day for Fleming, but the ability to, to convert, that's been the big issue today so far for FAMU. And, and he's overcome a lot, too. I mean, I think sure. we were talking, Florida a has got seven penalties on the day. Four of those have been offensive holding. I mean, normally that kills drives, but they've been able to overcome some of those holding penalties and still put some points on the board. Play clock, or uh, game clock is winding down, and that'll take us to the end of the third quarter. Well, Florida A&M has an 11-point mountain to climb with 15 minutes to go. Huge MEAC game. The three and one Bulldogs trying to make it nine straight against Florida A&M. The Rattlers trying to snap that stretch, pick up their first win against the Bulldogs since 01. Fourth quarter coming up. The big boys, the front line for South Carolina State today, and the blocking's been essential for some big plays for the Bulldogs. First special teams touchdown of the season for South Carolina State. Darius Drummond with a 68-yard punt return for a touchdown in the first half. That made it a 14-6 ball game. And you see what Florida A&M and South Carolina State have done offensively, how they've differed. It's been big plays for South Carolina State. Meanwhile, FAMU's been the more methodical team as they've got the football down 11 to start the fourth quarter. And Altariq McBurst gets wrapped up behind the line of scrimmage. We take a look at our game summary today. Richard Q and Damian Fleming, the inexperienced quarterbacks, have been at the helm of these two teams. And I think what you talked about is reflected right there in the time of possession. FAMU's been more methodical going down the field, but they've only put up 13 points. South Carolina State has turned opportunity into big opportunities, big plays, and they've got the lead. On third and one, handoff goes to their third down man, their power runner page for a first down run of four yards. And FAMU does move the football. This is a team that Hadn't run the football well this season, but now they've got a couple of guys that they trust, Page especially on those short yardage spots. Page is their go-to guy in short yardage situations, and McBurtz is their home run hitter who they like to use. And something to look forward to in the fourth quarter is Florida A&M has already run 63 offensive plays. South Carolina right. State's only run 38. You can keep a team off the scoreboard for three quarters of a game, but the key is are they going to wear down in the fourth quarter? And see how the freshman does, too. Damian Fleming has passed the ball a lot today. Here he'll hand off to Page. And he gets knocked around once again in play by Justin Hughes. Really came on strong last week. The freshman from Virginia Beach, Mike Adams, the defensive corner, says he has some ways to go, but he's very solid. Just an abundance of riches in the linebacking core for South Carolina State. That's what they want. He's got what you like to see. That guy that likes to run sideline to sideline. Doesn't matter if you're a freshman or a senior. All defensive coordinators like those guys that have those high motor type guys that consistently move around and cause havoc on the football field. Second and eight for Fleming. Another short pass. Lenworth Lennon gets knocked down after a gain of three by Darius Drummond. Drummond started at cornerback in week two for Yari King when King was out with a concussion. King's back in the lineup, but Drummond has earned his starting spot. And you see why. Great special teams and a nice open field tackle there. Third and five. How about that? Jumping the snap, Pat Washington. The snap was after he had already crossed into the neutral zone. There is a flag in the sideline. 
Offside. Defense, number 53. Five yard penalty. Third down. You're going to see Washington come from right here. He's going to shoot through, and they don't blow the whistle. So, what do you do? You're taught once you go through, if you get stuck in no man's land, just play to get the whistle. Gets a free shot in on the quarterback. But he was clearly offside. That was a late whistle, which calls for Fleming to get hit unnecessarily. And Pat Washington has already been big today, attacking Fleming. Still third down, so it sets up third and very short for FAMU. Jackson in front of Page in the backfield. They give it to Page, who dives ahead. Should have it up for the first down. Again, this is what FAMU has done. You said this earlier, they put themselves in third and short opportunities, even at times when they've had first and long, second and long, they've still done a good job on those plays early in those series to to make sure they have opportunities on third down. Yeah, they chip away with it. And what really helps is when you got a quarterback that's efficient with the football, that's completing a high number of passes. No need the yardage down the field, but if you've got a quarterback that's completing balls for positive yardage, then you're always going to be in attainable or makeable third down situations. Quick screen thrown out to Lennon. And a short pick yeah, a late hit. And it might be a late hit. There will be a couple of flags go flying. To the play, personal foul, number ten of the defense. He's late hit. He's on the white. Yep. Yeah, you can't come over there. You got to ease up. Once you see that's taking place, if you're Terrell Fitz, number ten in red, you've got to ease up off that. You can't make that hit two or three yards off the field of play. Well, FAMU will get a chance to move the football forward. Outside of the obvious scoring touchdowns, they've extended drives. But is there something Florida A&M needs to do to, to to get a score here? Is there something that they're not doing? I think stop hurting themselves. I mean, when they get close down, this is the time on the field where you see the holding penalty come in. And right. then they've got to overcome so much just to settle on trying to get a field goal. So if they can stop holding on first and second down, they can get it done on third down. Now, as good as they've been on third down in those short situations, setting them up, they still have to go from long range first and second down. Oh, razzle dazzle. Uh, they had an opportunity with Elliott, and Elliott will get called for a flag here. Richard was bringing pressure on Kevin Elliott on the reverse. He was on his way down when he just tossed it out. Intentional grounding. Number five. Penalty has lost a down at the spot of the foul. Second down. And that's where Elliott, not being a quarterback, doesn't realize, you know, not only going to lose a down. But it's going to happen from where it took place, and he's there. There's nobody close. They tried to do the razzle dazzle. He's got to get rid of it there or run. Realizes he cannot run him. Just throws the ball to nobody. That really, really puts a sting on this drive for Florida A&M. Exactly what you just talked about. And penalties have been an issue today. Eight of them now for FAMU, so they get pushed back and lose it down. Brandon Curry on the right side of the line. Claiming that Malcolm Reed brought him offside. Or was offside. All start. Offense, number 66. Five-yard penalty, second down. And another penalty against FAMU, and it's Curry. I, I tend to agree with Curry on this one. I thought that he was drawn offside. You'll, you'll take a look here right on the middle of your screen right here. Let's see who gets going first, and I'm pretty sure Hey, you're right. Yeah, I mean, and he was in there one full lunge. That's a tough call there on big Brandon Curry, 6'6", 310 pounds. Malcolm Reed jumped in against Curry. He was hurt. He's been hurt since the Norfolk State game. Well, they like Ferguson. They have Washington. They've got Reed. Those guys in the front line have been banged up a little bit for South Carolina State. It's a 30-second timeout. Well, Florida A&M uses a timeout. We'll take a break as well. 11:24 to go here in the fourth quarter. Buddy Pugh and the Bulldogs trying to hold on. Some of the greats 
the Hall of Famers. You got to look at the Secretary of Defense, one of them, Deacon Jones, Marion Motley as well, part of the class of 1968, and then Harry Carson, of course, two-time MEAC Defensive Player of the Year. And you look at Florida A&M's Bullet Bob, who is also outside of just a great football player, was an Olympic gold medalist twice in 1964 at the Summer Olympics. You mentioned this to me too, Jay. If you are good enough in these conferences to earn a nickname, that is a sign of respect that everybody else around the league is giving you. Bullet Bob, one of the greats. FAMU penalties have hurt him. They're at second and 25. Screen thrown to Tims. Good ankle tackle by Latarius Douglas. This is Bullet Bob Hayes. Still 71 touchdowns for Dallas. You know, Bullet Bob is a guy they said they created the cover two defense for Bob Hayes. Tom Landon in practice said, well, how are we going to stop a guy that fast? You can't let him start momentum. So they said, we'll have one guy jam him underneath and another guy play over the top. And Bullet Bob, the reason for the cover two. Right. Florida and m got rough in the passer. So although they got the pass off, South Carolina State put a late hit on Damian Fleming for the rough of the passer, which gave them the first down. Another rough in the passer penalty. Both teams have put themselves in a weird spot, tough spots, with penalties today. But first and ten for FAMU, down by 11 points. Fighting for the yardage, it's Al Tariq McBurse, who's been held down today. Picks up five yards there, but remember, a 200-plus yard rushing performance last week and only 34 yards today on a dozen carries. You know, they, they game plan for him. And right now, I think for Florida A&M, you've got to start making some throws towards the end zone. You've got a little over 10 minutes left in this football contest. You're going to need at least two scores. You know, you've got a quarterback that's having an efficient day, not throwing interceptions. Damian Fleming's 31 of 37. Trust him with the football. Trust him to make some downfield attempts. They haven't taken advantage of chances. This is the sixth drive of the day of 10 plays or more. McBurst trying to get to the perimeter. Quattlebaum cut him off, so he'll cut back. He's got a blocker. McBurst. It's fumbled inside the 10-yard line, and South Carolina State has it. It looked like Thomas picked it up. Fleming's coming out saying it's still our ball. Yeah, out of right. uh, Kevin Elliott. Try to rip it away at the end of that play. It looked like Thomas jumped on top of it. McBurst went 16, got tripped up, lost the ball for a moment. This is the play they had. McBurst bottled up pretty well. Nowhere to go. But if you're a good enough athlete, you can come across the grain, and he does. Now, you got to change that ball, put it in your left hand right now. Once you get on the sideline, he doesn't. That's why that ball came loose. And they were very fortunate to recover it if they did. Helmet on the football. It's out. Yeah, he's out of bounds. He's out of bounds, and that's why. And Darius Drummond tripped him up. And again, if you're out of bounds and then you play the ball, and you saw Thomas's feet slide out of bounds first, then he grabbed possession of the ball. And that's why FAMU retains possession of the football just outside of the 10 yard line. I think the officials right now are, are they doing a review of this to make sure? As we talked about it, you know, the MEAC conference is the only conference on the FCS level that when they have televised TV games, they actually utilize the replay technology. Following the recovery, the ball was forward and fumbled and out of bounds. By rule, it's brought back to the spot of the fumble. However, it remains the first half. So the 16-yard pickup still stands. Again, that call was confirmed, which means there was indisputable video evidence proving that the initial ruling on the field was correct. Well, Eddie Rocker now in the backfield. It's first and 10 outside of the 10-yard line. Rocker cuts one way and another, gets out of a tackle, and finally gets dragged out at the four. Good play by Alex Glover to recover. Glover brought him down, but Christian Thompson came into the backfield and missed that tackle. Good balance here by Rocker. You know he likes to bounce outside, the speed back. Makes the first guy miss, keeps going, gets that much closer. 
to the end zone. Rocker has three touchdowns on the ground this season. He's the guy with the great vision. He had the vision to cut it back there, second and three. Rocker with a stiff arm, but Glover gets him again. Good second effort by Glover, and now third down. They can get inside the one-yard line, but it's a tough spot right now for FAMU, which absolutely needs a touchdown, down by 11 points with under nine to go. And you see what they've done in the red zone. Remember, they came into this game having scored a touchdown on 11 consecutive red zone opportunities. Today, a touchdown and two field goals. 14th play of the drive. Six and a half minutes plus taken off the clock by the Rattlers here. And a timeout is called. That's the second timeout of this second half used by FAMU. So Joe Taylor only has one to work with with eight and a half to go that could play effect. Yeah, and you've got to start thinking, hey, if, if we're down by 11 and we don't have enough timeouts, and this may be two down territory for Florida A&M. You know, they've got, they need two yards in order to pick up a first down, play some smash mouth football. A little nervous about what I saw them break the huddle with that last one, with that quarterback in the shotgun formation. Get them underneath the center and let them push it in, but who am I to question when I'm going to get to a, a winning percentage like this? Yeah, Buddy Pugh is fourth right behind Joe Taylor. They have a great relationship. Double digit seasons for both coaches. Pugh in his 10th year as a head coach. 29th season overall for Joe Taylor. It's his fourth year at FAMU. What about the job Buddy Pugh had to do coming in here replacing a legend? Yeah. You know, the legendary Willie Jeffries. Who he played for in the 70s. Who he played for who is synonymous with South Carolina State football. Buddy Pugh has done a good job of keeping the legend alive, but creating his own niche as well. Third and two. Ronald Jackson, the fullback, Page the deep back. They'll hand off to Page. He dives ahead for the end zone and a touchdown. They heard the call. Got away from the shotgun, put the quarterback underneath, and this is just going to be just drive the pile, put the big fullback in there, Ronald Jackson, allow him to go blow up a linebacker. Good job of realizing where the red zone was and getting in the end zone, and that's just what Levante Page does. Nine touchdowns on the season, now that's his tenth. And it is now a four-point game with 8.35 to go. Another long FAMU drive. Seven minutes, 14 plays, 78 yards, seven on the board after Page punches it in. Hey, Stacy. Odds of four of you being named Stacy, one in six million. Odds of Stacy winning a prize, one in four. A million dollars. Monopoly at McDonald's is back and better than ever. Odds of LeBron James winning seven championships, one in. Come on, man. Odds of LeBron winning a prize, one in four. Free fry. ESPNU College Football Primetime is presented to you by McDonald's. I'm loving it. And everybody loving a gorgeous day in Orangeburg, South Carolina, the Martin Luther King Jr. Auditorium on the campus of South Carolina State, founded in 1896, this wonderful campus and university. And we want to talk about picturesque fall days. A rivalry game, FAMU and South Carolina State, a rivalry that goes back 81 years. And it's a tight one. Four-point game. And FAMU getting set to kick away after a lengthy drive, taking seven minutes off the clock and putting up seven points to get back within four. Trevor Scott kicks it away. Julius Pendergrass from the 10-yard line. The freshman brings it out across the 30. Good return. Pendergrass to the 34. And you get a look at the ball control in this ball game. Time of possession, more snaps, more yards, but the Bulldogs have the lead. They've got the lead, but they've been on the field for a lot. The offense has been on the sideline a little bit. They've been so reliant upon the big play. So I think if you're Florida A&M coach Joe Taylor right now, you've got to tell your defense, hey, let's shut down the big plays, keep everything in front of you. Good, solid tackling. Now, if you're South Carolina State, on the other hand, do you try to be a little bit more methodical now? I think they realize they're going to need another score to win this game right now. You know, up by four, that's not a comfortable enough lead where you can try and deflate the football. They need to get some first downs in one drive, and they can basically clinch this football game. 
They'll run the jet sweep with Pendergrass. They love that play with the freshman. Three-yard pickup. He gets hammered down by Brandon Hepburn. But Pendergrass, a converted running back. He was a great running back, hard-nosed runner in high school. They like to put him in spots to run. That's kind of what they do with this offensive philosophy they have. Their leading receiver a year ago, Elmore, was a converted high school running back. And then you talk about the other guys that catch balls for them. Those are Caleb Davis, former high school running back. So they like to have those running backs play wide receiver. Good hard run. Ashton yeah, Jordan, Jordan, right? Across the 45-yard line. First down run of 10 yards. Jordan had that 46-yard touchdown run here in this second half as well. Junior from Somerville, South Carolina, and the redshirt sophomore from Florence, Richard Q, making just his third career start, trying to lead the Bulldogs to a win. They'll likely need another score. Q will have second and long coming up on a bad snap. That's the second bad snap from Tristan Bellamy today. The redshirt sophomore Bellamy, their most vocal offensive line and there are four first year starters on this offensive line for South Carolina State. But this was the marquee game for them. They always get up for this game against FAMU a team that leads the MEAC in sacks. Five man pressure thrown out to Antoine Kerr the all MEAC tight end back near the original line of scrimmage and third down coming up for South Carolina State. Big play in this football game right now. Right. You've got a Florida a &M team that's been able to move the football defense that's given up big plays. South Carolina State been so reliant upon it at this stage in the game less than seven minutes third and ten to go come up with your best play. They're just two for eight on third down today. They've only had eight third downs today. Q pressure coming. Fourth down coming up was there a receiver in the area and there was. They're going to say Tyler McDonald was in the area. Joe Taylor wanted an intentional grounding penalty. Richard Q in the offense. Unable to sustain a drive and now a chance for FAMU down by four. And one of the veteran coaches in college football, a 29th year head man, fourth at FAMU, Joe Taylor, sends Lashard Tooks back to return a Blake Erickson punt. FAMU has brought pressure today. And movement up front for South Carolina State. It's a false start. False start. Offense, number 19, five yard penalty, fourth down. McFadden, the defensive back on special teams, called for the false start. He's going to try and over, overload the left side, go for a block. Pressure came, and Erickson got a good one off, but a line drive to Tooks, who takes it out to the 33 yard line. Short return. And FAMU takes over down by four. ESPNU is the home for the passionate college football fans. Our experts will break down the top schools in the country. Three hours. You'll see it twice on Tuesdays. One at seven Eastern on ESPNU. It's the experts, and along with. Anish, Tom, Jason, Brad, Bob, Joey, and of course, my man Jay. Why did they put you last, by the way? I, I was going to say alphabetical order, I was but say, then I saw you saw Lugan Bill, you saw Lugan Bill up at the top. <laughs> I'll talk to him about it once we get on set, believe me. First and 10 for Fleming, who's been efficient today. Rockets run across the middle to Elliott, who's up at it at the 45. Kevin Elliott, that's what he likes to do. Use that big frame. He'll give up his body and go across the middle. Fleming looks too hard to the right, comes back to the middle. Watch Elliott leave his feet. Catch it. See the defender. Know he's going to get knocked off his block, but still comes up with the huge play. 23 yards on Fleming's 32nd completion of the day. Elliott has five catches. Timms has five, McBurris has four, Lennon has a dozen as he goes in motion. 
Baker's dozen today for Lenworth Lennon. And not much room to run. And he's going to lose a yard. And that'll bring up second and 11. Right now, Ferguson. Go chase him down. And the thing it's got to be right now, you've got a team that's on the ropes. You've been able to move the ball all day, not punch it in, but you did do it on your last possession. I think they can pound the football right now versus South Carolina State defense. They've got defensive linemen with their hands on their hip. They've been on there for a number of plays, getting right. near the 70 play marker. You've been able to control them at the line of scrimmage. Surprised to see them still relying upon these wide receiver screens. You'd like to see them get physical right now. Fleming with time. The freshman scrambling. Should set up about a third and nine or so with under five minutes to go. This is what's at stake today. No MEAC team has won a conference title with three conference losses. Only once has it happened with two. South Carolina State, North Florida a and can really afford a loss right now. Yeah, but you see there's been a change there. North Carolina A&T was undefeated going into today's That's contest. Right. They got beat by Howard University. Howard at three and two. Now you got to put them into the playoff, into the mix for the MEAC title. Congratulations to Coach Gary the Flea Herald. Getting that big win for Howard's homecoming. So now the Miak is still up for grabs. It gets that much tighter and more tense on a third and nine for Fleming and the Rattlers. Fleming fires open receiver. Tim's the first down catch. The Rattlers moving the football. 16 yard pickup for Tim's in a first down. Fleming, they say he does not play like a freshman. And today, 33 for 39, certainly has not thrown like a freshman today. And he's been in control, and I don't think we've come close to see him throw an interception. And that's how I really judge quarterbacks. Right. These inflated numbers, anybody can go out there and throw 67%. But when he goes downfield, he makes good decision and nothing close to an interception coming off his arm. You have four wide receivers to work with. Hands off to Rocker. Rocker inside the 10 yard line. Finally dragged down by Ellis. The Rattlers are in position for the lead. You, you can see it. They're controlling the line of scrimmage. They've got a worn down defense on the ropes. They're pushing them down the field. Good zone blocking. Great forward lean downfield. Folks are trying to do arm tackles. I think you may need to get a timeout here if you're Coach Buddy Q because your team is a little winded. And they're getting pushed around by this very aggressive Rattler offense right now. They're having trouble getting everybody on the field right now. Leon Smith sprinting back onto the defensive line. First and goal for the lead. Rocker. A couple of yards and dragged down by Donovan Richard, a five yard pickup. It was Thomas on the stop, rather, and second and goal for Florida AM. Yeah, I mean, this is setting up perfectly for Florida A&M right now. You can let some clock tick down. You're inside the three-yard line, down by four, and you've got an offensive unit that can play traditional smash-mouth football at your quarterback under the center. I wouldn't be surprised if I'm South Carolina State, I'm looking for Levante Page if he's in the game, and all eyes on him. Page has been the short yardage guy, the goal line guy. They've got him in the backfield. He's got a touchdown today. The 80th play for Florida A&M in this game is going to give them the lead. Page into the end zone. They warm out. You know what they say down in Tallahassee. There's a phrase they say to describe the Florida A&M Rattlers. They say they strike, they strike, and they strike again. And the third strike has been the charm, giving the Rattlers their first lead in this contest since 3 nothing early on. The leading scorer in the MEAC has a pair of touchdowns today. And his Florida AM Rattlers have a three point lead with two and a half to go. The junior from Atlanta on another long drive. This time it takes four minutes off the clock. It took seven plays for seven. Mid-Eastern Athletic. The marching 100 has seen the Rattlers march down the field a handful of times, wearing out this South Carolina State defense. A touchdown has given the Rattlers a three-point lead. And this is what's at stake right now. A handful of one-loss teams 
four two loss teams in the MEAC right now. And I think it's mathematical elimination. Whoever gets the three losses, your season's done. Just about. And now you've got a bunch of teams right there that are in, all clumped together. And South Carolina State, they cannot afford to get that second loss because they lost their game already to Norfolk State. So if they get that second loss, that would pretty much mathematically eliminate them from clinching an outright MEAC crown. Trevor Scott to kick it away. Jalen Simmons to the 15 yard line. Simmons breaks that first tackle at the 35, gets a couple of extra yards, 22 yard return. Three timeouts, 2.24 to go. South Carolina State has used the big plays over the course of this ball game. That's how they got their lead, but right now they're on the ropes. And I think they're going to have to rely on the big play. I mean, you can't change your stripes in the middle of a football game. You know, South Carolina State 43 plays, Florida AM has run 80 plays. South Carolina State's only had the ball for 15 minutes. I think you got to look to get Caleb Davis and Tyler McDonald involved in the football game. This is what Jay was alluding to at the time of possession killer. Q will take a shot down the field and nearly intercepted. Was looking for Thomas Williams and Marvin Ross, part of this FAMU defense that leads the country in interceptions, nearly had a pick. I love the play selection, though. You've got to go vertically down the field, give your wide receiver an opportunity to go up and make a play, because they're going to need something to spark this offense, and I think you come out throwing for the rest of the football contest. If they can force Florida AM to play zone, then you've got them changing. We know the FAMU likes to play man-to-man -man with a lot of blitz. Let's see if Florida AM gets conservative with their defensive play selection. They'll run a jet sweep. Caleb Davis close to the first down marker. He'll still be a couple of yards short with 2.14 to go. And a third down coming up for South Carolina State. Richard Q taking over as a starter for the injured Derek Wiley. Just his third career start. He was starting to take more ownership. He was starting to turn into a leader. He's got about two minutes and a third and three, down by three. Here comes the blitz from FAMU. And McDonald wasn't looking for it. Ross on the coverage and a fourth down. And South Carolina State today is two for ten on third downs now. And now it's a fourth and three, and Q's going to stay on the field. Because they've got the ball in pretty decent field position, they can do that. If they don't get it now, they've got three timeouts, right. so they could still force a stand for Florida a &M. and he's bringing pressure. They're blitzing again from the outside. Pressure picked up. Back shoulder for Davis and a turnover for FAMU. A minute 58 to go, and the Rattlers have a three-point lead in the football. How could a luminous protein in jellyfish impact life expectancy in the U.S.? So FAMU has the football, but Buddy Pugh and South Carolina State, as Jay mentioned, three timeouts still. They can get stops, stop the clock, and Richard Q could get another opportunity to maybe be the hero today. Well, the Rattlers take over. And they'll go to the ground with their short yardage guy, Page. Got tripped up by Douglas. Got a yard on the play. A minute 52 to go. This is disappointing. And it's a three-point game with under two minutes to go, and everybody's, not everybody, but the, it seems to be believing right now. Yeah, they're down by three. They've got all three timeouts. If they stop Florida a &M, they can get the ball back with some time on the clock and to see everybody just heading for the exits. I give the Orangeburg faithful a little bit more credit for their football IQ, but when you see them all heading for the stands like that, you got to start to wonder why they're giving up on the team like that. Monday is on ESPNU. It's the Palmer and Pollock show at 1 and 9 Eastern. Jesse and David break down the past week. They'll Get you set up for the upcoming week. It's the Palmer and Pollock Show on ESPNU Mondays at 1 and 9 Eastern. Will Richard Q get another opportunity? Now he has to watch from the sidelines as his defense looks for a couple of stops. They have two timeouts to work with. 
A minute 52 to go. It's second and nine. For FAMU. It is Page in the backfield. He'll only get a couple of yards again. Darius Drummond came up to meet him. A four-yard pickup, and South Carolina State can use another timeout here, which they will with a minute 47 left. Yeah, I mean, it all comes down to this. If they can make the stop right now, they will get the football back. You know, Florida A&M cannot go for it on fourth down, so time management, that's what the coaches make the big bucks for. How do you manage a game at the end of the contest? And Buddy Pugh very thankful that he's got three timeouts to hold on to. FAMU very good on third down today. They have been phenomenal this season, about 40% or so today, 10 for 17. And they put themselves in situations like this, third and four, third and five, and they've converted those spots. They, they have been, but you, know, you got to throw that all out. Now, we're talking four-minute offense time, right. two-minute offense time. You know, third down conversion, throwing the ball is one thing. Right now, it's, can they get physical enough to get this first down on the ground and give credit to the Bulldog defense? They've really taken it to them these past two plays. And you know they're going to run it again. So if you're South Carolina State, make sure they don't get the first down, call another timeout, give your offense yet another chance. Sure enough, they put Page in the backfield with the fullback Jackson in front of him. They'll go to Page, and he'll get dragged down by Christian Thompson to force a fourth down. A minute 43 to go, and South Carolina State will use its final timeout. The Bulldogs will get the ball back. A great job by the defense of rising to the challenge. This is going to make for an interesting finish. They've got several things they can do. They can go for the punt block, and I would imagine they would do that. And you've got a team that's got the ball inside their 40. If they line up for a punt, you go after it. Even if they get it off, chances are they may kick it into the end zone. So this game is far from over. We have a very interesting finish. Florida A&M with a three-point lead, a minute 43 to go. They have not beaten South Carolina State since 2001. They have not won in Orangeburg in 14 years. Eight consecutive wins for South Carolina State. Buddy Pugh, the head coach of South Carolina State, has never lost to FAMU, and Joe Taylor is only three and six against Buddy Pugh lifetime. That counts his days in Hampton. These coaches know each other well. Two of the veteran coaches, the deans of the MEAC, and they've put on a show today in Orangeburg, South Carolina. Darius Drummond is back to return along with Stephen Murphy. Don't forget that Drummond has a 68-yard punt Thank return it. for a touchdown. It's a punt. Ronald Jackson trying for the first down. Ronald Jackson has it. FAMU is going to put this game away after a fake punt, and the fullback converts. This was the first carry of the year for Ronald Jackson. He goes there and he makes the first guy miss for the big guy, showed some agility and holds on to the football for the big game, even with through the spin move in there unnecessarily. But what a gutsy call by Joe Taylor. Season on the line, can't afford to lose on the road. Why not go for it? Control your own destiny. That's a wrap. The Rattlers have come here and struck the Bulldogs. The redshirt senior from Miami converts for his veteran head coach. Rattlers can put this game away. What a call on fourth down. Just gutsy. They saw something schematically where if they got the look, they had to take it advantage of it. They did. And you got a feel for a guy like Joe Taylor. You know, two weeks ago, they lose their homecoming to a Howard University team in which they were winning 21 0 at halftime, right. up 28 0 in the fourth quarter, lose by one point. And for them to have the ability to come in here with everything right and everybody saying this or that about the program, that shows you what type of respect his team has for him and just the character of Joe Taylor in the Rattler program. One of the all-time winningest coaches in FCS football ever. A guy who's seen it all and has done it all and has really called it all. And today the old veteran pulled a big trick out of his hat.
All time winning as coach in Hampton history. Helped Hampton convert from a one or from a D2 program to a one double A as well. For delay of game, the play clock failed to operate properly. Please put 48 seconds on the game clock, 40 seconds on the play clock. This lonely delay the inevitable. It's going to be a victory for Joe Taylor. And FAMU will snap that long losing streak to South Carolina State. When I talked to the Rattlers before the game, they said they got a feeling they were going to have a good performance. They put last year's kind of beat down by the Bulldogs in the past. Thought the Howard University loss actually showed the type of character that his team had. And he had a good feeling about this team. And I always say that's the mark of a really good coach. How well does he have a pulse of his team? It seems to me as if Coach Taylor has not lost the pulse of the Rattler football squad. FAMU holds South Carolina State to one score in the second half. And the Rattlers and Joe Taylor come from behind today to pick up a massive MEAC victory. For the first time since 2001, Florida A&M knocks off South Carolina State. This is Sports Center U. Welcome to Sports Center U. We had a Hail Mary decide the finish between Wisconsin and Michigan.